And DeAndre Wright are deep to receive. San Jose State won the toss, and they have deferred until the second half. So they will begin the third quarter with the football. And the New Mexico Lobos, oddly enough, in their road uniforms here in their home stadium, as they are technically the road team. And DeAndre Wright watches the ball sail out of bounds. The New Mexico State Lobos set to take the field offensively, and their right guard, Robert Turner, introduces us to their starters. Hi, I'm Rob Turner, here to introduce to you the New Mexico Lobos starting lineup. At running back, we've got Rodney Ferguson. Catching passes today, we've got Bullethead Market Smith and T. Brown from West Covina, California. Up front, we've got the hitman, a strong presence, blowing holes against San Jose State University. And Donovan Portery gets the start at quarterback. A red shirt freshman, one of three quarterbacks this season, used by the Lobos because of an injury to their anticipated starter, Cole McCamey, to start the season. And on first down, it's the top leader, top rushing leader in the conference, Rodney Ferguson, for maybe a half yard. And guys, Donovan Portery, a bit different than the second string quarterback, Chris Nelson. His mobility really is his key. Well, he's the guy that was very effective when he played, but keep in mind, he has not played in about a month. He hasn't been in a ball game because he was injured. And he's going against two of the finest quarters he's seen all season long. Faced with second down and long, a long nine, three receivers. And instead, on the ground, they keep it with Ferguson. And he comes very close to picking up a first down. And with an additional effort, has the first down. And we go to special teams. Waylon Prather, one of the kickers for San Jose State, introduces us to his defense. Hi, Waylon Prather, punter for the San Jose State Spartans. Our defense is led up front by even to tackle Fred McCutcheon and Jay Cole. Our linebackers, Matt Costello and the Joneses. Stevens of backfield, we've got All-American Dwight Eclipse Lowry and Peanut Chris Owens. Dwight Lowry, the Eclipse, about as good a nickname as you're going to find in college football. And a tipped ball, and almost the first turnover of the game. Travis Brown, the intended receiver, a bit high from Puerto Rico. It'll be second down at 10. Uh, you talked about Puerto Rico not being on the field with those injuries. He's also a red shirt freshman, not very experienced. So if you're New Mexico, you want to make sure you do the right thing for him. Porter Reed was the only quarterback this year for New Mexico to have a winning record in his starts. In the four games where he was the starter, he was three and one. And now they go back with one of their defensive backs lined up as the quarterback. Ian Clark takes the direct snap and looks for the bomb as Marcus Smith was the intended receiver. And this is offensive coordinator Bob Toledo likes to have a few of these. He brought in Clark, a defensive back, snuck him onto the field, and then let him throw this pass. Now Owens out there, the corner, does a great job. Smelled it, didn't let anything happen. That's just the first trick play. If you got a trick play, you want to you want yours before the other team. Of course, Bob Toledo was just named the head coach at Tulane, but he was... Excited to stay on and coach today's game for New Mexico. Puerto Rico under throwing his receiver on third down. And after a run by Rodney Ferguson giving New Mexico State field position near midfield, San Jose State holds. And we have an injured Spartan. Justin Cole is flat on his back. And Justin Cole, the quickest defensive lineman, according to the defensive coaching staff for San Jose State, and he would be a major loss, and already Dick Tomey is out on the field. Well, Dick Tomey on the field, this is common for him. Normally the head coach doesn't go onto the field when a player's down, the doctors do, but he cares personally about his players so much. A true father figure, Dick Tomey. San Jose State about to get the football when we return. Mexico? Turns out there's everything from mountain to lynx courses. They don't just have golf. They have some of the most scenic and affordable golf in the country, which is amazing because... For a vacation that will take you full circle, Golf New Mexico. Hey, Katie's boyfriend is here. And he went to Jared. He went to Jared. He went to Jared. Is Katie here? Hi. <laughs> Hi. Hello. Jared has five times the selection of ordinary jewelry stores. From classic to contemporary, Jared simply offers more distinctive gold jewelry. Surprise. Gold makes the moment spectacular. <laughs> 
he went to Jared. Jared, the Galleria of Jewelry. Now my credit card miles expired, but don't worry. Daddy's got a plan. Orlando, here we come. Is there meal service on this flight? Oh, yummy. Who wants some? Hang on. Bow weevil. <laughs> We should have switched to Capital One. Get Capital One's no hassle rewards with no miles expiration or in caps and no blackout dates. <laughs> yeah, oh, that's different. What's in your wallet? Aqua de Show. Giorgio Armani. At Macy's. SAP Software can grow as the company grows? That's great, because we are definitely going global. Just as soon as we go national. I used to think all Native American art was the same. Then I came to New Mexico and discovered 19 Pueblos, each with a unique style. I used to think all... For a vacation that will take you full circle, discover New Mexico. You guys run the double team a lot, right? Join us in March for ESPN The Weekend at the Walt Disney World Resort. Book your trip online today. At the base of the Sandia Mountains here in Albuquerque, New Mexico and San Jose State scoreless in the opening quarter of the New Mexico Bowl. James Jones is back deep to receive the punt from Jordan Scott. And Scott this season averaging 41 yards per kick. And Jones, a very dangerous return man. He really is the top playmaker for San Jose State. He has six touchdowns this year of 40 or more yards, one of them coming on a kick return. And this one returnable from the 15. And Jones gets out to about the 21-yard line, and now it's Jared Strubeck's turn, the kicker, to introduce us to the San Jose State offense. All right, Jared Strubeck here, place kicker for the San Jose State Spartans, introducing our offense. We got Adam Tafalis leading the way at quarterback with Giannis Davis at tailback getting the tough yards. Down on the line, we got Matt Cantu and John Booker leading the way. And Adam Trefalis, who Steve Morton, the offensive coordinator for San Jose State, told us is dollar steak tough. He's the kind of guy that will take a hit and keep on coming, although on first down, James Jones takes the direct snap. An inside handoff to Giannis Davis. And guys, Tafralis this year might have had as overwhelming a turnaround himself as an individual quarterback as there was in the nation. Uh, that's absolutely right. You're talking about a guy who was inconsistent last season, barely completed 50% of his passes, just under 50%, has really improved that this year and got his weight down. He was heavy last year. Last season, 11 touchdowns and 10 interceptions for Tafralis. This year, 18 touchdowns, only 7 interceptions, but helped out by this rushing attack as a 2-yard gain on 2nd down. It will be 3rd down and 4. Well, one of the things that has improved so much, especially you look at the touchdown-to-interception ratio, and the completion percentage, almost 66% now, is that Trafalis is now more of a leader in the huddle. He always had the physical talent, but he has learned body language. He's learned how to sell his team on the play that he calls, and everybody has rallied to that. They empty the set with five wide shotgun set for Trafalis on third down and four. Here comes the blitz. Trafalis just tosses it up and unable to run under it was John Broussard. Three downs and out for San Jose State. Pressure coming from Quincy Black right up the middle. Oh, Bob, you said here comes the blitz like it's a surprise. Hey, Trevor, they're going to keep bringing this all day long. All day long. And you see, he starts on the outside, number 11, Quincy Black, and then loops inside. That's a feature of this defense. They will fill all the gaps, but they won't fill them with the guys that line up in those gaps. Beautiful punt by Prather. And chases Thomas Wilson all the way back to his 11-yard line. Wilson gets to the outside, picks up a block, and he's finally tripped up at the 34-yard line. Injury update early on on the San Jose State sideline with Stacey Dales. Yeah, Bob, I just caught up uh, with San Jose State officials, uh, medical officials, and Justin Cole simply.
actually sprained his right ankle, very likely to return number 93 defensive end, and that's a good thing, guys, because remember, the team voted this guy the freshman of the year on San Jose State. And the San Jose State defense, guys, one of their biggest challenges of the season, as towards the end of the season with Donovan Porteria at quarterback, the New Mexico offense playing some of their best football. A pop pass over the middle for Porteri. And a hit right over the middle by Demetrius Jones as he quickly dropped Travis Brown after a gain of about four. Well, you can see what Bob Toledo is doing for his freshman quarterback. Short throws, high percentage throws, get the ball out quickly. This is a huge game for New Mexico. Even bigger for the freshman quarterback, this being a bowl. Bob Toledo is not asking him to do much as he gets his feet wet. Eight of five on first down, second and five for the Lobos. Fumbling the football in an end around, picking it back up and going down quickly is Travis Brown. So we have seen some trickery from both offenses early on, and that one almost backfired on New Mexico. Well, you know, you have a month to prepare for your bowl game. You've got time to get in your trick plays. Here's your end around. Not a clean exchange, but the speed of the game has an impact on you. When you practice for a month, Trevor, now you come and you play somebody else. Yeah, that's exactly right, right? I remember at BYU, the time off from the bowl game meant that the entire first half we never had our timing then in the second half look out third down and eight for bob toledo's group portery looks to throw fires one deep sideline almost intercepted by dwight lowry well it is rare that dwight lowry will have the football in his hands and lose it nine interceptions this year tied for tops in the country. Now, what did we say at the beginning of the, the cast, telecast here? Find 25, don't throw in his direction. <laughs> He's an All-American. He had nine picks. <laughs> You're lucky he doesn't come up with this one. Yeah, there's an alligator in that pond. Okay, don't go to that pond. <laughs> My goodness. Well, Lowry this season named as an All-American. And he became one of the first players in the history of San Jose State to make one of the five nationally recognized all-American teams. And a weak punt up the right sideline giving San Jose State excellent field position at about their own 35-yard line. When we come back, we are scoreless. unique blend of culture, cuisine, and climate all in one amazing place? You can do it all. To plan your trip to Albuquerque, visit itsatrip.org. You were fooled when I scored from anywhere because you believed that was about me. While I believe it takes five. But you're not a fool, are you? Hundred and seventy channels to turn your holidays on. Get an XM radio and three month service for under ninety nine dollars. XM terms and conditions apply. Plenty of sunshine through today with seasonal temperatures. We should reach our normal class. What a marvelously glorious looking shape. What a superbly spectacular marvel of rotating titanium. I love this shaver. For a close, comfortable shave, get the new Remington Titanium Rotary. This holiday, give and ye shall receive. Visit our website for a limited time offer. At Samuel Adams, we have 18 award-winning beers. We can't wait to make the next one. Every year, we bring out a new style of Sam Adams. And you can try the winning style in our Brewmaster six-pack. Yeah. We want to make the best of that style that an American beer drinker can get. Long John Silver's has some exciting news you're going to love. It's a fast food first. Buttered lobster bites are back. Rich, real langostino lobster in a buttery breading. Incredibly just $2.99. Only at Long John Silver's. A little over five minutes gone by in a scoreless first quarter. The first ever New Mexico Bowl. San Jose State, technically the home team, although we are in New Mexico's building. And this is where Brian Erlacher patrolled the New Mexico defense. This is a defense that has been built around what they call the Lobo position. It's a hybrid safety 
and linebacker spot that basically, guys, is designed to free up a player like a Brian Urlacher or a Quincy Black to roam and make plays. And movement in the line as a false start will most likely be called against San Jose State. Jumping on the left edge. Dead ball, was ball start, Hardaway. number 26 on the offense, five yard penalty, we made first down. And is that a reflection, Rod, of the chaos that they will see in the front seven? Well, a little bit, but I think they're just a little bit ang uh, anxious right there. But going back to Erlocker and that Lobo position, Rocky Long looks for a guy that's about 6'3", 6'4", 230 pounds to play that hybrid spot. Who can run, who can cover, and who can blitz. And that is certainly what he has in Quincy Black. Davis caught behind the line. Dragged the tackler forward for maybe a yard as Quincy Black will introduce us to the rest of his defensive mates. Oh, it's the juggernaut here to do the start lineup for the defense. At nose tackle, we got Wesley the butt back. At linebacker, we got Cody Case and Major Mosley, who don't like anybody. At DB, we got Aleem the Dream Harris and OJ Roommate Swift. Quincy Black, who we met yesterday, obviously very shy. It's hard to get him <laughs> to come out of his shell. Although I'm not sure if I'm Wesley Beck. I'm a big fan of my nickname, The Butt. Or if Major are you, are Mosley's a big fan. Are you going to take issue with, with Quincy? <laughs> <laughs> Probably won't. Grafalis on the keeper picks up about five. It'll be third down and ten. And Major Mosley, who doesn't like anyone. I'm not sure if I'd be a fan of that if I were Major either. You, you know, we talked about that defense, Trevor, but this offense, this offense scripts their first ten plays or so, and they do like to spread you out. They like to spread you out to see what you're going to do. Part of the reason for that script is to see what the crazy blitzes will do against each individual personnel group and formation. Then they'll know what plays to call the next time from that formation. Five receivers, four to Frolis, and an empty backfield. Now Davis moves back, potentially for protection on third down and ten. Here's Jones. And he will be brought down five yards shy of the first down as San Jose State will be forced to punt. But when you're up against a blitz and man-to-man -man coverage, it's difficult to get away from the guy who's covering you when they throw a screen. That's your guy. You're locked on, and James Jones was able to get a little bit of yardage, but that's tough when you've got a blitz, and the guy that's covering you is right there. And that's the guessing game. When will they blitz? When will they not? If you guess blitz, you're almost always right. Waylon Prather's first punt was 61 yards. This another beauty, trying to hang it inside the five-yard line, and it takes a New Mexico bounce into the end zone. That one travels 54 yards. The Lobo back to the offense in a moment. This year, when she asks you what you want, might be nice if you had an answer, like the Craftsman Digital Level. Super accurate, right side up or upside down. If you want it, ask for it. Craftsman at Sears. Right now at Fred Meyer and Littman Jewelers, our entire collection of diamond rings is on sale. Like this stunning two-carat total weight diamond ring for just $9.99. For all those special times. Fred Meyer and Littman Jewelers. Bring home the best from ESPN Home Entertainment with five new DVDs exclusively at Walmart. Relive the year's greatest sports moments. We're bringing you the best of the best on SportsCenter Year in Review, featuring two hours of the most exciting highlights. It's young scores. And four more DVDs with compelling stories. A great holiday gift for any sports fan. Own these one-of-a-kind titles. Available now exclusively at Walmart. You know, Wolf, with two minutes to go, I really like the call these people have been making all afternoon long. Yeah, a few beers for the guy in the blue tee. Or the south of the border drink by the young lady in red. And let's not go there, Dan. No, I really like the designated driver drinking the water. But not everyone's made the same call. We've been harping on it all season long, Dan. Designated driver, call a cab, call a friend, or expect the max. <laughs> designated driver, or expect the max. If your house is falling down and there's termites all around, call Johnny Termite. Call Johnny Termite. If your hand goes through the door and your foot goes through the floor, call Johnny Termite. Call Johnny Termite. Hi, I'm Johnny. I'm offering you a termite treatment and a warranty for one low price. That's no annual fees. Imagine up to 10 years of worry-free termite control. Call now. Call STX Terminators. 
and Dr. Tommy. Midway through a scoreless first quarter here in New Mexico. And here in Albuquerque for New Mexico. Controversy and tragedy striking in the past several weeks. And we will get to what has become a big topic for Rocky Long to have to deal with. First and ten for the Lobos at their own 20-yard line. Porter E. Right up the middle goes Ferguson for about seven yards. But on December 9th, three players, Michael Tui, Clayton Cardenas, and Justin Clayton, all being suspended after they took a recruit, Irvin Una Smiley, to a gentleman's club as part of his recruiting visit. There was an altercation with two men inside the club who then followed them outside, fired shots at the four players while they were driving away, then got into another vehicle, followed them further to an intersection, and fired more shots. 17 shots in all were fired at the vehicle that the four players were in as Ferguson weaved his way for a first down. And Irvin Una Smiley was wounded in this attack, and Stacy Dales has more on his condition. He was severely wounded in the attack, Bob. He actually took five bullets. Two of them are still in his right leg, three in the left, and one of those bullets in the left struck a nerve, severed the nerve. He met with doctors yesterday. They say it's a very slight chance he'll play football again. He has to have surgery to try and repair that severed nerve, at which point he will recover. However, they're not sure if he'll play football again or if he'll run again. Very slight chance again. Not good circumstances for the youngster. Good circumstances here for the Lobos as Ferguson into San Jose State territory with a big run for a first down, a gain of 20. But, Stacy, there has been further developments in the case, has there not? Absolutely. Uh, actually, there was an arrest made just yesterday, Bob, for a man with an outstanding warrant, a young man in his 20s, for a probation violation. Well, the task force made contact with him, towed his car, arrested him, and interestingly, he is a person of interest in reference to the shootings, guys. Further investigation ongoing, Bob. And the investigation continuing to impact the Lobos program as they are now in plus territory. Portery to throw. He wants it all. Just over the outstretched fingertips of the bullet. Marcus Smith and Rod Trevor. This obviously is a major impact, not only on the field, but also off for New Mexico's program. Well, if you start on the field, Trevor, the, the impact immediately is to the defensive line for New Mexico because they lost a good player into it. Well, Michael Tui, their best pass rusher, and this defense is really an effort-based defense. Guys need to fly around and literally wear themselves out within just a few plays and then let subs rotate in to let them rest. Without Tui on the field, it limits the rest. Second down and ten. Play action as Porter Reed dumps it right to Bauman, his fullback, for a gain of about four. And guys, it's also worth noting that Irvin Una Smiley, as Stacy mentioned, injured in the attack and may never play football again. New Mexico is still going to give him a full scholarship, no matter what his physical condition, to come to school here in Albuquerque. But that does not lessen the controversy, certainly off the field, the suspensions to the three players, two of which are only juniors. So now there's a decision to make for the coaching staff and the administration as to whether or not those players will be reinstated next year. Third and six. A rollout for Puerto Rico. Throwing on the run. A first down to Marcus Smith down to the 30-yard line. Well, you've got to wonder what players are thinking. They're at uh, not just a bar, but a gentleman's club. It's after midnight. How many times this season have we seen players at bars after midnight get caught in problems with guns, with drugs, with fights, with alcohol, with arrests, and yet these guys still decide that they want to go and do this? To me, it is just it's inexplicable why they would continue to follow a road like that. Hence the suspensions for the players, the decision for Rocky Long. Trying to throw the football on an option pass is Rodney Ferguson, and Jerron Gilbert stayed home and knocked it down. Well, as we look at the replay, they try to move the pocket in order to avoid the pass rush, but Gilbert, very fast, very explosive, has the ability to close on the quarterback, and what should have been a safe pass becomes merely a, a, a batted ball and incomplete. You know, Bob, getting back to Rocky Long, he's got a decision to make, but he's not rushing to make a decision about what to do with those players. He's going to wait until January before the second semester, and he has more information about what to do with those guys. 
Portery on second down and 10. The blitz picked up. He escapes the pocket. This is where he's dangerous and a wise move to simply throw it away. Well, Rod, one of the things that Rocky Long said was that he doesn't want to make that decision until he gets all the information in, and even the police report and investigation isn't finished. But he did say that these guys, even though they broke team regulations, did not break the law by doing what they did. So it's the team regulations that will draw the penalties. Well, I think what you're going to have happen, not just here at New Mexico, but across the country, teams will take another look at their recruiting practices and players hosting. They'll either reemphasize what they want done, or they may start restricting players recruiting or acting as hosts on recruiting trips. The ninth play of the drive is Puerto Rico. Drops the throw on third and ten and has no chance. Jerron Gilbert up the middle again with the sack. His fifth sack this season. Well, before the game, the San Jose State coaches told us that they like this matchup of number 53 Gilbert against the offensive tackles of New Mexico. They thought that they could win without having to scheme anything just by lining him up. And so far in this first quarter, he has been unstoppable on that pass rush. So Gilbert adding to his defensive totals this year. He is a playmaker, and Jordan Scott has now come on to punt, the former walk-on, who averages 41 yards per kick. This time, though, he'll take about a 28 to 35-yarder, just trying to kill it inside the 10-yard line and does a beautiful job of doing exactly that. It's down at about the 7. San Jose State back to the offense, deep in their own end. You guys run the double team a lot, right? Join us in March for ESPN The Weekend at the Walt Disney World Resort. Book your trip online today. I thought turquoise was just a shade of blue. Then I saw it. It had shades of passion, mystery, and grace. And I always thought turquoise was... For a vacation that will take you full circle, shop New Mexico. Your three medium Pizza Hut pizzas. That's only five bucks each, right? Yes, sir. Thanks. Thank you. Honey, the Pizza Hut kid made a mistake again! I got three medium Pizza Hut pizzas for the same price as those other guys! <laughs> yeah. It's no mistake! Pay just five bucks each for three medium one-topping hand-tossed Pizza Hut pizzas! Wanna get three for five? Go for the good stuff! Give a holiday card everyone in the family will love. Pick up the Pizza Hut card today. I'm Dale Hart Jr. Welcome to Wrangler Jeans Company, a new generation of Wrangler. New fits, new comfort, new styles. Wrangler Jeans Company, a new generation of Wrangler. New fits, new comfort, new style. Just playing in the Super Bowl isn't enough for Matt Hasselbeck. He hungers for more. Like new Campbell's Chunky Barbecue Burger Soup. Your NFL-sized hunger. Campbell's Chunky. Deals that fill you up right. The Philips Morelco Smart Touch XL adjusts to your face for a closer shave. With 50% more shaving surface and three shaving rings in each shaving head. Philips Morelco, the world's best-selling electric shaver. Simplicity is making every stroke count. This holiday... <laughs> Buck. Don't miss your chance to own America's fastest-selling DVD of the year. Top that. Pirates, bring it home on DVD today. I needed to relax, so I took a vacation to New Mexico. Ironically, I learned the best way to blow off steam is to be surrounded by hot air. And just a few days ago, I needed to... For a vacation that will take you full circle, unwind in New Mexico. ESPN College Football, the New Mexico Bowl, is brought to you by the New Mexico Tourism Department, who invites you to the land of enchantment, where adventurers follow their hearts and inspired moments are inevitable. AdidasBasketball.com, it takes five. And XM Radio, 170 channels to find what turns you on. Beyond AM, beyond FM, XM. The Lobo fans have watched their defense dominate here early on. The game's still scoreless in the first quarter. And San Jose State beginning this possession at their own seven-yard line. This is the first ever New Mexico Bowl. San Jose State at 8-4, and four, one of the great turnarounds in college football this season. Although so far today, two possessions, two, three, and outs. Patrick Perry is now in the backfield for the first time. As Trafalis rolls right and hits Broussard, a first down and more, out to about the 21-yard line, hammered down by Glover Quinn. 
Well, this time they lined up. James Jones in the slot. Safety Tyson Dittmore was on him. And I'm sure the coaches will say, hey, if they put a safety on James Jones in the slot, let's go then. Isn't that exactly what Osa Lewis, the New Mexico defensive coordinator, said we do not want to see. As Jones matched up at any point against the safety. To the ground and Perry. Gain of a couple. Hey, hey Trevor, let's go back a couple of plays. Look at this right side of the line. You've got a tackle, two tackles and a guard, an unbalanced line. Why does San Jose State go there? Well, you take the left tackle and put him over on the right side. And you go there to get extra blocking power. And you would expect that to be a run. And yet they threw successfully from that formation. And on the left side, they only had a guard and a tight end. So the defense was looking to roll its defense towards the tight end. They got outnumbered by that unbalanced line. Jacob French slowly in motion outside on second down and nine. Trafalis buying some time. And underneath Jones, it looked like he got hit a bit early by Glover Quinn. No flag comes out. It'll be third down and nine. Now here is Broussard, 81, wide open down the middle of the field. And sometimes when you're blitzing and when you're switching your man assignments, somebody will run free. That's right. But when you've got James Jones, that's where the quarterback's attention went. And he could have had a big play down the middle of Broussard. We were asking Adam Kofalas yesterday, who is the security blanket? And he said with a smile on his face, have you seen James Jones play? Well, Broussard has been a security blanket for him at times this year as well. And they run an interior option on third down and nine. Basically a give up play. And now San Jose State will be forced to punt away once again. Yeah, I'm really surprised by that call. Given what they have on the outside, with James and, and, and Broussard, why run that play? I think you're worried about the blitz. I think at third and nine, they're worried about a big hit deep in their own territory that could force a turnover. And right now, with no score, they're playing the field position game. Low snap taken by Prather. His first two punts both traveled over 50 yards. This one a wobbly kick, very returnable for Wilson. And he simply goes north to the 40-yard line. <laughs> A reminder that Saturday night, the bowl road trip continues on ESPN. Two high-powered offenses take the field as Paul Smith and Tulsa meet Brent Ratliff and the Utah Utes. The Bell Helicopter Armed Forces Bowl on ESPN tonight at 8 Eastern. It's also available on ESPN HD and ESPN Radio. You talk about turnarounds at San Jose State. Steve Cragthorpe did a nice turnaround with Tulsa. Now everybody expects him to be good. You look at Paul Smith, the quarterback. And you'll be seen in that ball game. Well, Smith is one of the best quarterbacks you've never heard of. Consummate game manager using all of his talent to the best ability. His numbers looked a lot like Trafalis' numbers this year. Here goes Ferguson. A gain of six out to the 46. Dragged down from behind by Matt Castello. You know, they're doing a pretty good job of going after Castello and Dimaggio Jones, the linebackers. They're, they're smaller. You know, they've got that big offensive line, Trevor, and if they can get their big bodies on those linebackers, that's a problem for San Jose State. Well, Matt Costello at middle linebacker is only 5'10", 215. They moved him inside because he's one of only two returning starters. They thought they needed his experience there, but he is small for them. He is a tackling machine. Ferguson shirts loose in the backfield and picks up a yard out to the 47. It will be third down and three. Costello helped to make that tackle. He's a little guy, but he sticks his little body in there. Yeah, he is, but look at what they do with him, though. They move him back to about nine yards of depth, eight or nine yards. He's off the line of scrimmage, gives him room to roam to make plays. Your middle linebacker is normally a lot closer to the line of scrimmage. Part of the reason for that is so that it's harder for offensive linemen to get up there and block him. If he can run, he'll make every play. Castello had two 20 tackle games this season. There were only eight games like that recorded this year. And the third down pass knocked away. He had two of the eight, and there he was back in pass coverage to knock it away from Thomas Wilson. And Ron, what a terrific play by the middle linebacker. 
behind Wilson. Then he was able to reach around in front to knock that ball away without pass interference. So watch Wilson just run right into him and try and pivot off of him. That's a nice job. You can use that left arm to brace yourself. So long as you don't turn the receiver around, you're not going to get called for pass interference. It sounds like a cornerback technique from a middle linebacker. Uh, a trick or two. A trick or two. Drop that! So we'll see if San Jose State can get some field position back. A high floating punt from Jordan Scott in traffic. Calling for a fair catch and fielding is Dwight Lowry at about the 23-yard line. Only 10 seconds to go here in the first quarter. And on change of possession, guys, automatically the clock starts, of course. The new clock rules this year in college football. So that most likely was the final play of the first quarter. And it's been a defensive battle, a field position battle. And Probably not so much the way Dick Tomey might like it. Rocky Long, though, I mean, you know that's the way he likes to play football. Hey, Dick Tomey's always been about field position, defense, and the kicking game, and you know that. Well, he's an old-time coach. We see it here. We'll step aside scoreless after the first quarter in Albuquerque. The Jets take on the Dolphins at 8.30 on ESPN Monday Night Football. No curb appeal. Hate the color. A lot of life happens in your car. Conoco quality Pro Clean gasolines help clean your engine as you drive. The pink wasn't so bad. So you can focus on more important things. Conoco quality Pro Clean gasolines. Hey guys. Hey, hey guys. <clears throat> we uh we have a little announcement to make. We both uh <laughs> He went to Jared. Oh, he went to Jared. He went to Jared. He went to Jared? He went to Jared? Jared, the Galleria of Jewelry, has five times the selection of ordinary jewelry stores, from the classic to the contemporary, so you'll find the perfect ring. He went to Jared. I know. He went to Jared. Jared, the Galleria of Jewelry. The final days of the Pontiac Red Tag event is the time to find Pontiac's design with power. Impressive fuel economy and the best coverage in America. And now find them tagged in red. And the price on that tag is the price you pay. The Pontiac Red Tag Event. Your last chance to get the best factory to dealer incentives of the year, but only until January 2nd. See some red, save some green. Okay, here we go. Turn the to the right. That's the one. There is the deuce. Perfect. High five. How's it look out there? Good? Like when things are real easy? You're going to love what we've done to retirement planning. It's called My Plan from Fidelity. Retirement planning made easy. Smart move. Famous Route 66 runs very near Albuquerque in the Route 66 Diner. Oh, they make a fine omelet there. I'm sure Trevor Maddich can testify as we return to Albuquerque and it's San Jose State to the offense. Okay. No score to start the second quarter. Correct? Okay, Jack LaLanne. <laughs> I don't see you towing a rowboat across you, a lake anytime soon. Uh, you weren't up early with me for my workout today. I really, I worked on my right peck as I took the fork and continually moved it to my mouth in rapid succession. For Fallis, downfield, wide open Broussard, a blown coverage, and the game's first points couldn't be easier for the Spartans. 76 yards. goes you'll see him run the post he comes from the outside to the inside and a blown coverage coverage to the outside Trevor and left the middle wide open for Broussard well, New Mexico came into this game expecting to play man coverage most of the time that time was zone where you rely on your help and they got confused that time Broussard was open wide up the middle and that time Adam Trafalis found him. We saw how frustrated he was when he ran the seam in the first quarter, guys. Very demonstrative. When Trafalis couldn't 
find him. This time, make no mistake. See, he's on the outside. He sees the zone coverage, and they run a, a flag, a corner route, and the post with one guy back there, and the cornerback chose to go to the flag and left the middle open. You see Big Tony getting right to his man of the moment. Pat on the back. Well, he wants him to know that he did a good job and that he's proud of him. That's one of the ways that Toby turned this program around. It wasn't just coaching from the top down, but letting these guys know that he knows them personally and he cares about them. And then he can work them into the ground and get them ready to perform like that. Bob, what do you bet that Broussard went to the sideline after he was wide open and made it known that that route was there? And to a certain extent, when you see a wide receiver react like that, to me, guys, it's almost like he's showing his quarterback up a bit, but when we talked to Adam Trefalos yesterday, he had nothing but praise for James Jones, John Broussard, Jalal Beachman, basically saying that from the start of spring practice all the way through the summer, those guys get together on their own and are constantly working to get ready for the season. And well, we're seeing the fruits of that labor now. That's the seventh time this year that Trefalos has found Broussard and the 19th touchdown pass of the season for Trefalos. DeAndre Wright from the goal line. Gets loose. Makes a move to the outside. He's to midfield. Runs over the kicker and gets to the 40-yard line of the Spartans. Well, there's a momentum turnaround for the Lobos. Well, there is some huge hitting. Look at the left of your screen. Right there. Oh, man. There's just guys getting knocked to the ground, flying around, and this looks great for the returner, and it was great, but it was the blocking that sprung everything. Guys, we have it on good authority that that is the longest kickoff return in New Mexico Bowl history. 7-0 <laughs> San Jose State. 14-22 to go before halftime, and the Lobos now in plus territory. Ferguson slowly and deliberately towards the line. He didn't look too sure about that run, guys, and picked up a yard. And on the San Jose State sideline is Stacy Dale. Well, Bob, we just saw the Broussard touchdown, and after that demonstrative celebration, offensive coordinator Steve Martin got in the face of his offense, and he said, shut your mouths, represent yourselves, show some respect. I don't want to see you guys smiling right now, play like champions. Not happy about that celebration, guys. Perhaps he's propelling them to play even harder. Great job, Stacy. Second down and nine. Porter E. Looks to set the screen up and finds Ferguson. Blockers out in front. And Ferguson has a first down to the 26-yard line. You know, to follow up Tracy's point, San Jose State had a reputation of being very athletic and big. You know, they could make big plays, but the character thing was the issue. And you heard Tracy talk about their composure on the sideline. Dick Tomey, Dick Tomey said they needed to make sure that they focused on their character and not the physical attributes. Well, sure. When you just, when you just praise how big they are, that's God-given. When you praise their toughness, their focus, that's coaching, and that's what they want to be known for. Trap handoff up the middle to Matt Quillen, the fullback, for a couple of yards. And I guess, guys, it's that old saying, act like you've been there before. And these guys haven't been there before. And that's the key. Dick Tomey and his staff have been there before. Between all this staff, they've been to almost 60 bowl games. And so every time they win another game this season, Tomey and the staff go to the players and say, here's why we won, here's what we have to continue to do, because they don't really know. They haven't been there. Second down and eight. Portery to Ferguson for a couple of yards. Mm -hmm. Trevor, you mentioned the resume that Dick Tomey has amassed during his career. Well, look at the numbers. Well, he turned around that program at Hawaii, which was not an easy job to do. Arizona, same thing. But he told us yesterday that San Jose State was the most difficult job. San Jose State was a program that was, you know, the faculty, students, administration were thinking about dropping the entire program. Instead, they brought in Tommy, and boy, they sure are glad they kept it. Portery on third down and seven. Fires one up the seam and has his man. 
That's a first down to Travis Brown, who scoops inside the 15 down close to the 10-yard line. Well, San Jose State did put together one of the biggest turnarounds in college football from last season to this year. Look at the win improvement difference. Arkansas Rice and Wake Forest, the only Division I programs with more wins from last year to this. Uh, something just remarkable, but, you know, they're in trouble right now. New Mexico is about to turn around that last score and get back in the ballgame. And Mark Brown down closer to the 13-yard line, first and 10. Back to the ground in Ferguson. Dodging tacklers in the backfield, but finally swamped under for a loss of a yard. Yeah, Trevor, I'm looking down at the field, and I see that Stacy is down around the 10-yard line. She's got an excellent view of things. If I call her Tracy one more time, she's probably going to kill me. But <laughs> <laughs> Stacy's got skills. With she, a Z. She can see that defense swarm, but that's what they need to do is swarm, Stacy. You know, hey, guys, I worked with you last year in the Friday Night Package, and Rodney Gilmore, I don't appreciate that. <laughs> I just want to let you know. Bobby Gilmore. <laughs> You shouldn't, you shouldn't have stayed away. <laughs> no, honestly, guys, I'm so glad to be back with you. Uh, we, we would play pickup basketball games uh, at the university where we were going to do the game. And every, all the time on the opposing team, they didn't want to be the guy to cover the girl, which was Stacy. And it turned out that Stacy is a WNBA star that would light up whoever tried to cover her. Yeah, I, was, I know Stacy's basketball resume, and I have to think that that was not good for anyone in the position of trying to avoid embarrassment. Second and 11, Portery to the outside. Breaking a tackle is Bowman. He's inside the five-yard line, very close to a first down. Now, Rod, you talk about New Mexico turning this momentum around. One of the things that the San Jose State players need to learn is how to follow up a big play. They had that long touchdown to Broussard, but then they gave up a big kickoff return to allow New Mexico good field position, and now New Mexico is methodically driving it down. You're right. That goes back to the smiling and the laughing on the sideline. You can't have that. You lose your focus, and you give up the big play. Speaking of a big play, guys, the eighth play of this drive, and this is a huge play. Third down and about a yard from inside the five. Ferguson swings wide. Has the first down. Knocked down at the two. First and goal for the Lobos as they look for the equalizer. A big advantage. Big advantage for that offensive line down there. It is because they are big and they are powerful and they are a bit nasty. Especially Robert Turner. These guys have attitude about them and down in close is where these guys want to be. Well, think of that right side. Turner at 310 and Devin Clark at 320. That's a powerful side, and you got a fullback ready to go in right behind them. Flags fly before the snap. Well, Ferguson looks frustrated, too. He was set. This is where he's made his living this year. Institution, number 60 in the defense, half the distance to the goal, and made first down. Now it'll be first and goal inside the one. Yeah, and that's all you need to give that big offensive line, move the ball closer. I mean, look at those guys, right side, 70 Clark, you know, 50, 59 Turner, and that's 630 pounds on the right side. Two guys. Ferguson is the eye back. He has five touchdowns in New Mexico's last five games. Looking to make it six games in a row with a score. He gets the call on first down and loses a yard. Boy, the San Jose State defense comes through with Rakeem Toombs leading the charge. Number 31, Matt Quillen, fullback. 260 pounds. Take a look as he goes to the left, number 31, and there's just nowhere to go. Tackle made in the backfield. What a train wreck in there by that San Diego State defense. Yeah, and how about Toombs coming off the corner with his speed? Don't have to be a big guy. It's fast coming off the corner. Two tight ends and an offset eye once again. He lost about a yard and a half to Ferguson outside the two. He gets the call, though, and does not come close. It'll be third down and goal from inside the two. I, I thought certainly by now that they would have gone to the right side. Jerron Gilbert in on that play, but I, I thought the right side was where they would go. But Bob Toledo does use his fullback and tight ends down here, Trevor. He'll, he'll use them in the flat. And number 83, tight end John Mulcrone has caught more passes by a tight end than any in New Mexico for about 12 years. He might be the guy they'd go to. Rodney Ferguson lost 
about a half yard once again. And now a timeout call by San Jose State on defense. As first and goal from inside the one turns to third and goal from the three when we come back. I needed to relax, so I took a vacation to New Mexico. Ironically, I learned the best way to blow off steam is to be surrounded by hot air. And just a few days ago, I needed to... For a vacation that will take you full circle, unwind in New Mexico. NCAA fans are now being rewarded with $100,000 in scholarships from Pontiac, the official performance machines of the NCAA. Go to any Pontiac dealer and ask for a scholarship certificate with a unique code. Enter your code at Pontiac.com slash scholarship for your chance to win a $50,000 scholarship. Plus, you could instantly win one of 10 $5,000 scholarships, all to help you or your family pay for school. But only if you get to a Pontiac dealer by January 2nd. At Dick's Sporting Goods? We've got Columbia to fit your family from head to toe. Jackets and sleeves. Winter boots. Clothing and more. All from Columbia Sportswear. Tested tough. Every holiday season. Starts at Dick's. The North Face believes you should never stop exploring. And the place to start is Dick's Sporting Goods. Featuring the North Face jackets. A great selection of fleece. Boots and more. Every holiday season starts at Dick's. So thousands of other mid-sized companies run SAP software. Does that mean I'm not the maverick nonconformist I thought I was? Aqua de Gio, Giorgio Armani, and Macy's. Golf in New Mexico? Turns out there's everything from mountain to links courses. They don't just have golf. They have some of the most scenic and affordable golf in the country, which is amazing because... For a vacation that will take you full circle, Golf New Mexico. Third and goal from the three for New Mexico. Looking for the equalizer. So far this season for New Mexico, they've been inside the red zone 35 times. Only 17 touchdowns. So a little less than 50%. See if they go play action here. Portery under center. Two wide outs to the wide side of the field. Back to the ground in Ferguson. Lost the football. It's grabbed in the end zone and loose with it is Demaja Jones up the right sideline with a caravan. Ferguson after him and he's tripped up. What a turn of events. Are you kidding? Hey, Ferguson was going in. And that ball squirted out about three or four yards in front of him. Watch as he gets hit here. And that ball just jumps out in front. And how about Jones? The presence of mind to keep going and not to take a knee in the end zone to just secure the ball. He's thinking score. And had he gotten one block, Trevor, he'd have gone all the way. That's right. He saw that the offense was packed in. And if he could clear that first level, there was nothing but green in front of him. How about the hustle of Rodney Ferguson? He fumbles the football and then turns around, gets up, and runs 60 yards to make the play and save a touchdown. To Fralis. Looks to attack and has about a five-yard gain. Check that it's called incomplete, intended for Jacob French. Let's go back to the fumble once again, guys. And really, watch Ferguson at the end of the play. Now, he's going to be the guy that comes back to make the tackle, but he should have been blocked. I mean, there are three or four San Jose State guys out there that could help, but they didn't see Ferguson. There are a couple guys behind. There's one guy in front that doesn't look up Ferguson, and Ferguson comes in and makes the tackle. And I tell you, that's an amazing hustle play because Ferguson, he got hit, fumbled the ball. Then we saw his feet up in the air, and he landed at the bottom of a pile, got up from there, extricated himself, and sprinted down the field to force that play. As great as that was, the better play by Jones. Well, Jones, Jones is a, a former safety. And so when you're a safety and moved to outside linebacker, you've got ball skills and you've got speed. So when he saw that ball pop in the air, he knew exactly how to pluck it out of the air with his hands and what to do afterwards. Matt 
Costello forced the fumble. And what a start he's off to. He's got six tackles, a forced fumble, a pass breakup. And he is picking up right where he has left off all season long. Well, he's out of Valley Christian High School, one of the premier sporting high schools in Northern California down there in San Jose. He was a great athlete there and has continued that at San Jose State. What is that on his head? It's like a bag it's of baggy. some sort. <laughs> well, baggy. Why? Well, he's back to the offense. Never Second seen that down before. Ten. Cold head. For San Jose State. Running the shovel pass up the middle, and that one not fooling New Mexico as Defralis pushed it off, and Jeremiah Lovato came up the middle and made the stop. And when we talk about San Jose State players are used to being terrible. Now they're in a situation where they are learning what to do in a big-time bowl game. They got the momentum with that long touchdown to Broussard. They gave it right up on that touchdown drive to New Mexico. Now, how does the offense respond? This is a big moment for them. Find number three. <laughs> find, find Jones. Third down and 13. Motioning into the backfield is Giannis Davis. Four receivers. They try to hitch one inside. It's tipped and almost intercepted. Quincy Black came up the middle, got his hand to the football, and almost caught his own deflection for a pick. And if he hadn't gotten his hands on that ball, Jones was set up for a big play. I mean, watch Jones. Well, here's number 11, Quincy Black. He sees the quarterback pull up and reads it. Now, he could have just kept running, in which case the ball would have gone over his head. Instead, he has the presence of mind to jump. Thomas Wilson back to receive the punt. It's loose up the sideline. What a turnaround in terms of field position now. Blake Lagone comes up with the loose ball on the far side. What a stand for New Mexico's defense. And the Lobos back to the offense in a moment. The final days of the Pontiac Red Tag event is the time to find Pontiacs designed with power, impressive fuel economy, and the best coverage in America. And now find them tagged in red. And the price on that tag is the price you pay. The Pontiac Red Tag event. Your last chance to get the best factory to dealer incentives of the year. But only until January 2nd. See some red, save some green. Do you really need a titanium driver? That magnesium frame spinning reel? A 60 inch screen? Do you really need a motor oil that protects for 15,000 miles? Darn right. You deserve the best of the best. Mobile One Extended Performance. Advanced technology, proven anti-wear protection, guaranteed for 15,000 miles. Mobile One Extended Performance. The oil that's changing oil. Your personal information is no longer personal. It starts with your name, then your social security number, then your credit card number. And with very little effort, your identity can be stolen. Life comes at you fast. That's why Nationwide offers identity theft coverage. We'll assist you in the recovery process, save you hundreds of hours, even notify you if your credit report changes. Just another way Nationwide is on your side. Nationwide is on your side. Got it. The Beats had some cataracts. <laughs> the sheep don't like it. Lock the cash box. Does he saying stop the cat box? Stop the cat box. You don't have to understand your music to understand how to get it all from your PC to your phone. Only Singular lets you take ripped, purchased, and even subscription music on the new Singular Sync. Only $49.99. Stop the cat box. Singular, raising the bar. ESPN College Football, the New Mexico Bowl, is brought to you by Pontiac. Vote now for the Pontiac game-changing performance of the year at ESPN.com, keyword Pontiac. A $100,000 scholarship contribution is on the line. And ESPN Game Plan. Buy your bowl game package on ESPN.com's Game Plan online and catch over 20 bowl games live and on demand. Welcome back to New Mexico here in Albuquerque. San Jose State's fans have seen their team take a 7-0 lead, but what a shift in field position. A 14-yard punt, a shank by Waylon Prather. 
And now New Mexico, after fumbling at the goal line a moment ago, back to the offense, downtown goes Portery. And he just outthrows Travis Brown. It will be second down and 10. Brown was there. Portery needed to throw that ball high in the air, put some air under it so Brown could then adjust his speed, use his body to shield the defensive backs. And that's one thing that Portery will learn. When you've got an outstanding receiver like that, you've got to give him a chance to make a play on his own. They took a shot at Dwight Lowry again. I'm just, I'm stunned that they've gone at him a couple times. Travis Brown was a first team all Mountain West Conference selection, the leading receiver. Now over 100 catches for his career. And Thomas Wilson, a hitch to the near side. Gain of about three. It'll be third down and seven. And as we speak, there's college basketball on ESPN2. Texas Tech with a six-point lead over Bucknell. And, of course, Bobby Knight with 878 career wins. 879 ties Dean Smith. 880 breaks it. And here are the next two games after today. Thursday, December 28th at 9 o'clock against UNLV on ESPN2. And then New Year's Day at noon against New Mexico. Also on ESPN2 as we continue to track the general's pursuit of the all-time win total in college basketball history. Tip ball incomplete on third down. And what a win it was for New Mexico last night, college basketball-wise. They beat number eight, Wichita. Well, that's one of the things Rocky Long has done here. Uh, Albuquerque has always been a basketball town, and all of a sudden, Rocky Long arrives nine years ago and revives this program. They have been to bowl games for the last five years, and football is now a passion here. But, but it's still a basketball town, don't uh, you think? Yeah, but basketball's bounced straight up and down. They bounce from it. I mean, how can you have a, a game with a ball like that? You know? <laughs> okay, Jordan Scott sets a punt, and a much better punt than Waylon Prather got off a moment ago. New Mexico will let it roll. And it takes a neutral bounce right to left down just outside the 30-yard line. 7-0 San Jose State League. With unmatched technology and innovation years ahead of its time, we've pushed the boundaries of high definition and tested the limits of reality. The new Pure Vision Plasma Display, only from Pioneer. Bring home the best from ESPN Home Entertainment with five new DVDs exclusively at Walmart. Relive the year's greatest sports moments. We're bringing you the best of the best on SportsCenter Year in Review, featuring two hours of the most exciting highlights. It's Young Scores! And four more DVDs with compelling stories. A great holiday gift for any sports fan. Own these one-of-a-kind titles. Available now exclusively at Walmart. Hear that? It's the sound of unlimited freedom from Cricket. Talk and text all you want, including unlimited mobile web. Be unlimited in every Cricket market for just $50 a month without ever signing a contract. That's the sound of freedom from Cricket. And right now, buy any phone and get your first month free with no activation fee. Check out our holiday offers at a Cricket store near you in North Phoenix. Have you been arrested for a DUI or criminal offense? When I was wrongfully arrested for a DUI, I contacted Phillips & Associates because I knew they could help. My attorney handled everything and was very professional. The staff always provided me with the best customer service possible and kept me informed about the progress of my case. I'd recommend them to anyone in need of an attorney. Thank you, Phillips & Associates. Little or no money down to begin your criminal or DUI case. Call us right now, 602-258-8888. The game-changing play so far in this afternoon's New Mexico Bowl. The first ever turned in by Adam Perfalis. A 76-yard touchdown pass to John Broussard. And you can help decide the Pontiac game-changing performance of the year. Go to ESPN.com. These are your choices. Search Pontiac to determine which school will win the $100,000 General Scholarship Fund contribution courtesy of Pontiac. And again, ESPN.com is where you go to vote. Coming up on six minutes to play before halftime. San Jose State with a 7-0 lead over New Mexico. Up the middle with running room goes Davis. 
offensive coordinator Steve Morton told us to try and guys to catch Giannis Davis by trying to tackle a butterfly. We saw some of his moves in the open field there. It helps when he puts it back. Gets blocked. Look at number 11 on the right of your screen. He's on the ground and then continues into the backfield. Now Giannis Davis can make guys miss in the hole. That's what the reference about trying to tackle a butterfly is. He's just so slippery when you think you already have him. Morales in the shotgun. Again, it's Davis. And this time, the Lobos tackled the butterfly for a loss of a half yard as Jeremiah Lovato came through and made the stop. And Trevor, you talked about Davis and in the hole and how he's able to make people miss. He's got great feet, really good feet. He can change directions on a dime. This guy was a great high school running back, Skyline High School out of Oakland, California, and didn't have many places to go because he wasn't a big back. But, you know, 5'6", five, 5'7", five, and 180 pounds, he's a dynamite. Averaged 82 yards per game this season. 6.3 yards per carry. Good as it got in the lap. A low snap. The Fowles handles it to the sideline. Up in the air, climbing the ladder. James Jones, and he hauls in a first down grab. Is that one of those bailout throws to his favorite receiver? Might be where you go to your security blanket. Jones usually makes it pay off. Well, take a look at how Jones stops, sees his quarterback in trouble, comes back. DeAndre Wright overshoots it. That's part of the security blanket. All offseason, not just spring football, but the entire offseason. Trafalis threw to Jones. He threw to Broussard. They got used to each other's rhythms, and it just paid off. San Jose State has always had quality receivers, great athletes. Guys like Mervin Fernandez played against him 20 years ago or so. They've always had talented offensive players. This is only the fourth play from scrimmage in plus territory in the game for the Spartans. There have been 18 plays in plus territory for New Mexico, and yet they trail 7-0. And the season that was put together by Jones and Broussard, guys, what a combination they were. 1,600 yards and 15 touchdowns. Yeah, they, they really, really helped turn this program around, gave the big plays, and I think people forget about how great San Jose State used to be in football. And they've turned out some legends. You know, you think Bill Walsh, Dick Vermeil. You know, how about Louis Wright, quarterback? Jeff Garcia, quarterback? Steve Clarkson played quarterback there. They've had talent and great players throughout their history. And Jones has now gone over 800 yards for this season as Profiles drops the throw, picks up some protection. Rolls the pocket. He has Jones. Makes a move at the 10. He'll walk into the end zone for a touchdown. A two-score lead for the Spartans with just under four minutes to go in the half. Well, here's that familiarity between Jones and Trafalis. All those hundreds and thousands of passes in the offseason. Here's the route. He looks back and sees his quarterback on the scramble, so he knows what to expect. They practice this over and over. He comes back. Trafalis knew he would come back when he saw the scramble, and that's what leads to the touchdown. And you can see they've got talent at the skill position between Broussard and Jones, two outstanding receivers. point from Jared Strubeck is good. The 20th touchdown pass of the season for Adam Trafalis. His second so far on the afternoon. And it's 14-0 San Jose State. Welcome to San Jose State University, where tradition meets tomorrow. Where the West Coast's oldest public institution of higher learning is enriched by dynamic new facilities. A strong city-university partnership has built a state-of-the-art library. Classroom faculty deliver hands-on undergraduate research, qualifying thousands of students for today's most valuable careers. San Jose State University, empowering students, powering Silicon Valley. This message furnished by San Jose State University. As a leading public research university, the University of New Mexico is on a bold course for the future. With nationally recognized programs in healthcare, engineering, science, and the arts. It all takes place in the land of enchantment. The University of New Mexico, where great things begin with you. This message furnished by the University of New Mexico. A five-play, 69-yard scoring drive, perfect on the drive. Adam Trafalis, 
Although just as we went to break, the officials ruled that the extra point was no good. So it's now 13 to nothing. And from deep in his own corner, DeAndre Wright's forced to take a knee. Yes. He was kind of caught in between, wondering if that ball was going to go out of bounds. Yeah, Trevor, on our drive over, we were talking about the matchups in this ball game, and I think we both felt that the receivers of San Jose State, that was not a great matchup for New Mexico. Well, because New Mexico was going to put their corners, DeAndre Wright and Glover Quinn, man for man. Now, those are two sophomores at corner, maybe the best pair of corners they've had here in a decade. But even so, with Broussard and Jones, San Jose State has the speed and the talent to match up one-on-one -on -one with really any pair of corners in the country. And gentlemen, for the most part, this first half, New Mexico has spent time in plus territory. They just have no points to show for it. Trailing 13 to nothing. A hitch to the outside. Paul Baker gets a block and picks up about nine yards, a half yard shy of a first down. But let's take a look at these last four drives for New Mexico. Of course, the biggest play in the game defensively made by San Jose State, forcing the end zone fumble on the second drive. Well, yeah, I mean, they got no points. They have nothing out of this. And for Bob Toledo, he really wants to get something going, not only because, you know, he's an offensive coordinator, but, you know, he's heading to Tulane. And he spent the last several weeks working as the head coach for Tulane and the offensive coordinator here, so he wants to show that he can do both. Rodney Ferguson back in the game. He has the first down and more. Breaks a tackle. Ferguson loose. Makes a move in the secondary all the way down to the Spartans 36 yard line before he's brought down. And what a fine Ferguson was, a sophomore taking over for Dontrell Moore and keeps that string of thousand yard rushers but he wasn't and New Mexico fine. going. Wasn't a find until the season really began. He started fall camp as third string, but it's runs like this that brought him to first team all Mountain West Conference. He hits the hole, he doesn't mess around, he runs through tackles, and he gets positive yards. And you saw there he has just enough speed to turn what should have been a four yard gain into a much longer gain. A gain of 35, and this is the 19th play in plus territory today for New Mexico. They have no points as of yet, as Paul Baker weaves his way for about nine more yards. Let's go back to that last play. We talked about this offensive line and how they are big and they can be dominant. Well, that big run that gave you those 35 yards, look what Bo Greer, 64, does inside right here. Look at that block. That's Greer, 320, on top of Cas Costello, who's only 215. Well, Greer, for pregame meal, eats a baked potato with butter, cream cheese, just all kinds of fat on top of it. He says <laughs> it's the poor man's power bar, and it sustains him through the game. I think he just ate Costello. <laughs> <laughs> Bauman off the left side. As I now find myself extraordinarily hungry, very close to a first down inside of the final two minutes of the second quarter. And this may require a measurement. Nope, first down, New Mexico. Now the officials spot the football and wave the chains to move forward. You know, back, back to that point on Toledo. When he was hired as head coach, he went out and hired a new staff and helped with recruiting, and he said that he had gotten about 75% of his game plan done before they started really working on San Jose State for the bowl prep. So he was okay with that, but no points to show for it yet. First and 10 at the 26, Porter E. Pump fake, sets up the screen. New Mexico dodges a bullet. They were lucky that ball fell incomplete as Paul Baker was buried. Well, Trevor, how hard do you think it's been on Toledo to do both jobs? Well, I, I think it is hard to do because his focus right now is at Tulane, where he'll be the head coach next year, putting together a staff, trying to get some recruiting happening over there, and yet he stayed here to coach this, this ball game, which I, I think is the right thing to do, and Rocky Long thought it was the right thing to do. But it is double duty, and it does mean he doesn't get a whole lot of sleep. Ferguson back in the game. 135 to go in the second quarter, and the clock not really a factor for the Lobos. They have all their timeouts. Inside counter handoff, Ferguson. Gets down to about the 23. We'll see if New Mexico spends one of their three timeouts here with one minute and 23 seconds to go on the clock rolling. Uh, they probably will. They look like they will. And, and I do think Toledo's done the right thing, made the right calls. They have not gotten it done when they've been in position, such as that fumble that went the other way. And he is working, though, with some slightly short deck with a freshman quarterback. He's trying to help him as well. With a look at what is coming up on our halftime report, let's go to Reese Davis back in our ESPN studio. Reese? 
All right, guys, we'll examine at halftime in the Rose Bowl game which group of pass catchers are truly the golden receivers. We'll also look back at earlier in the day, bowl game in Birmingham, the Bulls battling the Pirates, Skip Holt taking his team there against South Florida, and Bob Knight on the brink of history. So when you come back on the Smith Barney Halftime Report. Only a minute and 19 seconds from now, 13-0 San Jose State with the lead. And once again in at least the scoring area, New Mexico, but they've been shut out thus far. Well, they have been shut out this far, and they need to stay with what they do well, the run. San Jose State will load up the box, but they've got to find a way to succeed on the ground because otherwise the entire game is on the shoulders and arm of their freshman quarterback who is just off an injury. Well, you know, right now they do have time, and they're in position where they could run two plays. So even though it's third down and about eight, you don't have to feel like you have to throw the ball. And they could take two plays to pick up this first down unless you're thinking field goal. <laughs> third down and seven. Close to eight with 119 to go before halftime. The Lobos trying to pick up a first down, and the San Jose State fans, and there are a fair number of them here making some noise below our booth down to the right as Porter E drops the throw, steps up, fires up the seam incomplete. He was looking for John Mulcrone, his tight end, and this will be a bit of a testy field goal. Do you go for it on fourth and eight, or do you send the field goal unit out? And it looks as if the field goal unit will come out and try and get some points for the Lobos. Well, this is the right decision. First, because going into the half, they do need points. Second, because kicker Kenny Bird is one of the most reliable kickers in the country. He visualizes every kick. In his mind, he has made this kick from this hash dozens of times before he ever walked out. To him, it's an afterthought to have to actually physically do it. Bird has made 12 of his last 13 over the last seven games. This one from 40 yards has plenty of leg, and it's good. That's pretty good visualization. It's worked for him. It's turned him from a guy who didn't know how to put his pads on when he first walked on into a great kicker. Let's check in downstairs with Stacy Dale. Well, guys, like a lot of kickers, Kenny was a soccer player through high school, and he actually was discovered by his now brother-in-law, Casey Kelly, who was a quarterback here in New Mexico. And uh, they had a family gathering, and they were messing around with the football outside, and all of a sudden, they decided to kick a football between two trees. And Casey said, hey, man, you can play football. What are you doing with the soccer game? So Kenny basically said, you're right. And like you guys just mentioned, he didn't even know how to put on pads, but he's made a huge difference for this Lobo program thus far. And Stacey, one of his major influences is Chris Bonio, who, of course, most of the time he spent in the National Football League was with the Dallas Cowboys, but he holds a kicker's camp. And Kenny Bird went to that kicker's camp and made tremendous strides and still talks glowingly, Trevor, about Chris Bonyol's impact on him and basically turning him into a professional amateur kicker. Well, Bonyol did two things. First, he, he cleaned up his technique and how to actually approach the physical side of it, but mostly it's mental. We hear about kickers being head cases, and they are. But Bonio has turned that head stuff into a positive with Bird because he taught him how to visualize. And Bird spends hours every week just visualizing every detail, the color of the grass, the direction of the wind. Well, Bird put the ball in the end zone, and he puts it out of the back of the end zone here. So San Jose State will have the football at the 20-yard line. And a reminder that Colt Brennan leads the nation's top offense, and he's one touchdown short of the NCAA record. Sunday night, he goes for the record as the Hawaii Warriors beat Arizona State. Of course, playing under Dirk Cutter. The Sheraton Hawaii Bowl on ESPN Sunday at 8 Eastern, also available on ESPN Radio. And look at the numbers that Colt Brennan has put up. And this game being 8 p.m. Eastern, it's a chance for the people on the East Coast to see what all the fuss is about. Brennan is legitimate, but most of his games finish long after midnight on the East Coast, so they don't know much about it. Ten-point lead for San Jose State. So they put the ball in the freezer with 47 seconds to go before halftime. Two tight ends, Davis the lone setback, and Davis brought down right at the line. Well, guys, San Jose State really hasn't had the football. And that's only the 20th play that they've run in this first half. But on five plays, they picked up 158 of 177 yards. And they just haven't had the football, but they've made it work 
with big plays. Well, we've talked about the boom or bust nature of the New Mexico defense. They blitz, they play man coverage. The problem is that the offense hasn't held up. 13 points in the first half is not bad for New Mexico's defense. And it will be a 10-point lead for San Jose State at halftime. The inaugural New Mexico Bowl. The halftime report coming up now. Let's go back to our ESPN studios in Reese. All right, guys, 10-point lead for the visitors, for the ones wearing the dark jerseys. Glad to have you with us on the Smith-Barney Halftime Report. That's Woody Lou Holtz, Mark May here. Nick Tomey, who's resurrected San Jose State football, Mark, architect of the old desert swarm defenses at Arizona. Stats weren't great this year. We're seeing some pretty good defense in the first half. Yeah, and a lot of it has to do with his co-defensive coordinators, Dave Fipp and Tom Williams. And not only that, they were able to shut down the great running back, Rodney Ferguson, for New Mexico. He had over 1,000 yards rushing this year, and I think that was key, slowing down the rushing attack, holding them to three points in the first half. Yeah, but when you look at this football game and you look at how well New Mexico was able to run the football, you say, why they only have three points? Because they missed opportunities on offense. They get down to the one-yard line, they fumble. They get down inside the 20, they make a mistake. When you get in the red zone, you have to be able to get points on the board, and they did not do it the first half. Well, on the other side, the 13 points come from mistakes by New Mexico. They turn the post free. They're blitzing 3-3-5, three, three, fancy defense, with turned the guy loose on the post for a touchdown, and then again missed a, ta a tackle, which turned into a long touchdown pass. So two big plays, 13 points. And the Spartans have a 10-point lead at halftime. This is the second bowl game of the day. Earlier this afternoon in Birmingham, South Florida, against East Carolina in the PapaJohns.com Bowl, Jim Levitt and the Bulls got shut out last year in a bowl game in North Carolina State. Didn't waste much time getting on the board when East Carolina, James Paintney got a low snap and got all botched up, and South Florida took over. Benjamin Williams would take it from there, made it. Hitting it down. He'll look at the hole created by the left side of the offensive line. He doesn't get touched for the score. South Florida up 7 up. And later in the first, Bulls have it at the East Carolina 46. Williams with 26 more ducks. I'll tell you what, the Bulls were physical all day long with the East Carolina defensive line and just ran it at them, did what they wanted. They were more physical all day. Williams finishing off the drive again, stumbling over that Legion field turf but getting into the end zone. 14-0 South Florida. 14-7 game. This might have turned it around. Matt Grothy to Amari Jackson. Grothy can run. He can throw. He makes a great, he, nice pass there, obviously. But he got banged up early and had to come out of the game. And Pinkney rushed hard all day, Luke. Well, he took a pounding. He took a beating. And uh, I've never seen a quarterback get hit any more, any harder than what he did during the course of that day. And also what helped South Florida was five times they went they were successful on fourth down conversion. So Jim Levitt <laughs> running around trying to almost warm up. Missed. Almost missed. Uh, not quick enough. A little bit slow these days. 24 to 7. Skip Holtz taking his team to a bowl game, but losing to South Florida 24-7. And with South Florida's victory, guys, South Florida becomes the 83rd program to win a bowl game since Skip Holtz's father led Notre Dame to its last bowl victory, New Year's oh. Day 1994 against Texas A&M in the Cotton Bowl. That means almost every team in Division 1A, the artist wow. formerly known as 1A, won a bowl game. Coming to an end. Named it. That, uh, that's coming to an end, and that sounds like unnecessary roughness. <laughs> <laughs> I am merely here to point out facts. The facts yeah. All right. 83 programs. Notre Dame has LSU coming up a little later on. And great performance by Jim Levitt's team. Yes. Skip Holtz's team, very good job to get into a bowl game this year as well. Missed some opportunities and might have had a better chance. Still to come, Rose Bowl matches a couple of pairs of great receivers who has the edge among the pass catchers. And Bob Knight on the brink of history. We'll get you up to date on the general chase. Catch the Dean. The Jets take on the Dolphins at 8.30 on ESPN Monday Night Football. <clears throat> it was the night before Christmas, and Mom didn't know that Dad's right behind her with a box and a bow. This Christmas, tell her she's the greatest chapter in your life story with diamond earrings from K Jewelers, where you can be assured of two things. Every diamond is hand-selected to match beautifully, and she'll absolutely love them. But I heard him exclaim as he drove out of sight, I'll Mary. always remember how I feel tonight. Every kiss begins with K. Plenty of sunshine through today with seasonal temperatures. We should reach our normal class. What a marvelously glorious-looking shape. What a super 
superbly spectacular marvel of rotating titanium. I love the shaver. For a close, comfortable shave, get the new Remington Titanium Rotary. This holiday, give and ye shall receive. Visit our website for a limited time offer. Kids, we're going to visit the land of our ancestors. Ireland? No, credit card miles expired. Think more distant relatives. This is great! Hey, it's me, Cousin Bob! Going down. We gotta switch to Capital One. Get Capital One's no hassle rewards with no miles expiration, no earn caps, and no blackout dates. See, kids, first pass all the way. Something smells good. Oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> Welcome back to the Smith Barney Halftime Report. How proud are you? How strong are you? How imposing can you be? The best way to prove yourself is to play in a game like this. USC, Michigan. In the granddaddy of them all, the Rose Bowl game, presented by City, New Year's Day. And maybe I could add another question to those that Brent Musburger asked about the Rose Bowl game presented by City. Which group of receivers do you want to throw the ball to? A couple of pretty good choices. They're forced to choose Michigan or USC. Doesn't well, it really doesn't matter. You take whoever you want on the field, and they got great receivers. But I'll go. I'll go with the Michigan receivers. I think they they're the type of guys that make big plays. Uh, Adrian Arrington stepping in this year and and just going up for the ball, big body type guy. Uh, Steve Breston, a possession receiver type guy, averaging only 10 yards a catch, but he leads them in receptions. And then Mario Manningham, who made big plays, nine touchdowns the first six games, did get banged up. But they've got the tall, lanky guys that can go up and catch the football. Well, you know, this guy was a Big Ten backer all season long. He picked him over the SEC and other conferences. <laughs> <laughs> well, you have to go with Southern Cal. I mean, you look at Dwayne Jarrett. You look at Steve Smith. I mean, some of the catches are incredible. You look at the statistics. And John David Booty can get him the ball. Lou, you're my partner. You know yeah. what? Oh, you're my boy, Lou! Right. You're my boy, Lou! You're my boy, Lou! Got to go with those Trojans, USC, C. Smith, Dwayne Jarrett. Yeah, they do a great job. How about Patrick Turner, six foot five, 29 receptions? Let's not forget the tight end. Fred Davis, 35 receptions on this year. They like to spread the wealth out there in the West Coast. This is Pac-10 football. <laughs> the flu, they know how to throw the ball in the Pac-10. they had tall, lanky guys for the last 20 years? And don't they have a whole can of them sitting over on the bench to open up to and just football. pop them up and Catch bring them the in? And they got guys that are... We've never heard of yet. They're going to be superstars. <laughs> hey, Lou, how do you assess the motivation in this game? Both teams, for different reasons, come in. I don't know if you should or could be disappointed going to the Rose Bowl, but if you could be, these two teams are coming in not exactly what they'd hoped for. I have to think it would be USC. They lost to their arch rival, UCLA, by a score of 13 to 9. They thought they were going to play for the national championship for the third straight year. That did not happen. They're a young football team. Pete Carroll's a great coach. They will bounce back. They have something to prove, and they're going to start building on next year. You know, it's just amazing to me that when you lose just two games in a season and you go to the Rose Bowl, <laughs> and it's a disappointment because you're playing for national championship. Yeah, I know. How about year. that? That's the amazing thing. Both these teams go into the Rose Bowl, and they're disappointed. Yeah. It, it, that, that, that's amazing to me that, you know, and both teams did have a legitimate shot at getting to the national championship and let it slip away. But to go to the Rose Bowl and, and be disappointed, that's pretty amazing. I, I want to throw something out. Let's just say Florida beats Ohio State, Michigan wins impressively. AP voter, would you vote Michigan national champion? No, would you? I'd vote Florida. Would have you? To vote Florida. They, yeah, they yeah. defeated the number one team in the nation. What if Ohio it was, State ugly? was number one from day one all through the, the entire season? What if it was ugly? It doesn't matter. Ohio State beat Michigan. It doesn't matter whether it's ugly. It's said they were win or loss. That's, why you, you start daisy That's chain. why you move. You start daisy hey. chaining these. Did Auburn, did Auburn, Auburn beat Florida? You know, I, yeah, I, I just asked the question. You know why USC plays for national championship year after year? Because they're, because they're disappointed players. about being in the Rose Bowl. They have high standards, and that means an awful lot. The expectations when you go to USC, what your expectations are. Yeah, you know that's why I laugh. A lot of times people will say that this school they have unrealistic expectations. Oh well, why don't we all just have moderate expectations, and everybody try to go six and six. You know what's wrong with that high gets, expectations? That gets to some teams the bowl game. Some right? educators <laughs> would agree with you and applaud that. It falls, it falls back to those seven wins and getting to a bowl and being happy down there at South Carolina, or seven wins and getting ready to be fired. Yeah. Expectations. And that's true. That's what they say. You know, Steve Spurrier got upset when they clapped for his team when they lost. 
You know, the Paul lost to South Carolina. <laughs> Same old South Carolina. Got to learn to win. <laughs> Speaking of learning to win, Bob Knight knows how he can match the Dean by beating Bucknell. We'll get you up to date on his chase of Dino. This halftime report is brought to you by Smith Barney. Come to Smith Barney, where wealth works. If your wealth isn't working for you, then neither is your financial advisor. Smith Barney Financial Advisors have, on average, 16 years of industry experience. We don't sell our own mutual funds, so we can offer independent advice. And only Smith Barney Financial Advisors have direct access to the depth of Citigroup's global resources. Experience. Independence. Depth. Come to Smith Barney, where wealth works. Two days left. Kmart and ESPN Classics celebrate last-minute endings. July 10th, 1999. The Women's World Cup Final comes down to a penalty kick shootout. Team USA's hopes rest on the left foot of Brandy Chastain. All of a sudden, it was the whole celebration, and the, the stadium erupted. It was just unbelievable. Get great last-minute gifts at Kmart. Open until 10 p.m. and later all week, including Christmas Eve. So guess what Ted bought Sheila for Christmas? What? A vacuum. <laughs> Who does that? Still time for great last-minute gifts. We're open till 10 or later Christmas Eve. Kmart, where Christmas comes together. We worked on Sam Adams Light for over two years. The whole brewing staff was dedicated. Sam Adams Light reaches a level of flavor that light beer has never gotten to before. Offensive lineman for four years. I no longer wear pads, but I still carry a lot of weight on my shoulders. There are over 360,000 NCAA student athletes, and just about all of us will be going pro in something other than sports. This is the Smith Barney Halftime Report. The General Robert Montgomery Knight, playing against Bucknell, 878 victories on his resume. He is just one victory shy. The great Dean Smith with the top spot, the all-time wins list on the men's side. 879. Knight going against Bucknell on ESPN2. Jarius Jackson. Tell you about Jarius Jackson. He can finger roll. Raiders up by a deuce. Then Jackson, look at the precision offense from Knight. Martin Zeno. Texas Tech up 22-16 after the free throw and Daryl Dora. Dora, 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 the explorer. Got to have young kids to understand that one. 63-42, Texas Tech with the lead. Knight about to get 879 and pass Dean Smith against UNLV. Here's the game everybody's been waiting on. Joe Kim Noah, Greg Oden, 138 years old. Ohio State and Florida. <laughs> Daquan Cook for three. Really, Oden is a freshman. He looks like he's a freshman ready for retirement. The boy, he is a man. Oh, Greg Oden, no soup for you. Al Horford coming off a sprained ankle. You better be healthy if you're coming into Mr. Oden's neighborhood. Mike Connolly with the drive in the layup. Ohio State, the youngsters on the road. The Thad Five. Florida down two, and Torian Green nails the three. With a great look from Joe Kim inside to Chris Richard. Gators up by five. Noah gathering two of every kind of points. Hop on Noah's art because the blowout's about to start. Off the inbounds pass, Corey Brewer with the stuff. Gators up by nine at the break. And in the second half, oh, could this be an omen for what's going to happen in Glendale, Arizona? Gators running away late, Mark May, Torian Green. Oh, it could happen. It's a possibility. 86 to 60. Nearly a four-touchdown lead for the Gators. <laughs> the Buckeyes can answer in just a few weeks. Texas and Tennessee, what a finish this was. Chris Lofton, nobody's got more range than Chris Lofton. Not even Doug Flutie in pickup game. 
<laughs> you stand still and shoot way out there, Doug? Once you cross half court, you're in range, buddy. Kevin Durant, the great freshman from Texas, ties it up late. He had 26, went into overtime, lost into Wayne Chisholm. Balls come from way back to beat Texas, 111 to 105. Mark May, he takes up space in the paint, just like Greg Oden from Ohio State. Still the rebound champ, but only out of high school, 25, 30 years later. San Jose State up to the half. Your team shot bad. The season of joy, the season of light, when parents seem more like children and children more like angels. And on behalf of your good neighbors at State Farm, we want to wish you and yours all the hope, joy, and light the season has to bring. Hey, man, how'd you do today? All right, but I totally ate it on my last run. Do I have a big bump? No. Cool. New Totino's Mega Pizza Rolls. They'll change your definition of big. Go big with Winner X Games and Totino's Mega Rolls. Log on to GetMegaXGames.com or text. You could win the grand prize 2007 G Patriot pack with Winner Gear or one of thousands of cool instant win prizes, including free Totino's Mega Rolls. Enter now and get mega. This program is brought to you by Sands Chevrolet, Arizona's Chevy source for more than 80 years. Hey, football fans, right now at Sands Chevrolet, you can score huge discounts. Drive home a Chevy Colorado for only $99.95 for just $89 a month. Yes, just $89 a month. How about the rugged 07 Silverado Extended Cab with room for your whole team and their gear for only $14,455 or $169 a month. And our used car superstore has hundreds of quality cars, trucks, and SUVs. Plus, buy any new or used car, just give us an extra buck and you'll get a $2,500 Walmart gift card. $2,500 at Walmart for only $1 more. And the Heisman goes to San Chevrolet. Come and see us, 55th Avenue in Grand or 47th Avenue in Glendale. And we're always online at SanChevrolet.com. San Chevrolet. One million satisfied football fans can't be wrong. Call us 866-SANSWAY. That's 866-SANSWAY. Now return to your regularly scheduled program. They are one of the surprise NFL stories of 2006. Chad Pennington and the New York Jets still in the AFC playoff chase. They visit Jason Taylor and the Miami Dolphins on Christmas night at 8.30 Eastern on ESPN's Monday Night Football. Our bowl road trip continues tonight. The Helicopter Armed Forces Bowl in Fort Worth, Tulsa, and Utah. Speaking of rising stars in the coaching fraternity, Steve Cragthorpe of Tulsa leading the Golden Hurricane in against the Utes. ESPN HD, 8 o'clock Eastern Time. You can see as our Christmas Eve Eve bowl road trip continues. James Jones paying off with a slick little spin move and sprint down the sideline. The Tomies up 13-3 on the Fighting Rocky Longs. This halftime report is brought to you by Smith Barney. Come to Smith Barney, where wealth works. Earn your first dollar by your labors. Get up early. Work late. Smile at challenges. Curse at idleness. Be true to your dream. Don't stop until you achieve it. Pass on your values, not just your assets. Working wealth wears no uniform and meets in no club. But you know who you are. Come to Smith Barney, where wealth works. The true power and beauty of plasma is often hidden, unable to be captured. Only Hitachi Original Technologies unleash the most lifelike color and detail in plasma. Introducing the world's highest resolution 42-inch plasma HDTV, only from Hitachi. Fred Meyer and Litman Jewelers have a gift that will take her breath away. Diamond earrings. 
The entire collection is on sale now, like these half carat total weight diamond earrings for just five forty nine. For all those special times. Fred Meyer and Lidman Jewelers. The inaugural New Mexico Bowl. It was a hard-hitting, scoreless first quarter, but then Adam Trefalos with two touchdown passes, one to John Broussard, one to James Jones in the second quarter, and that's the margin, 13-3 San Jose State over New Mexico. And as we take a look at our game track to this point, it has been certainly the passing of Adam Trefalos in the second quarter that has made the difference. And guys, here's the Broussard catch. Well, it's a big play here. You see that there's a miscommunication in the secondary. Three receivers, two defensive backs, miscommunication. Broussard runs the post pattern inside Trevor. Nobody goes with him. That's right. Either there was supposed to be a deep safety in zone or another man coverage guy that wasn't there. And you have the big fumble on the goal line by Ferguson. The offense was doing well running the ball. That turned it over. They didn't get anything out of it. And then once more, a big play created by one of the receivers, Jones, James Jones, in a one-on-one -on -one situation. And that's the difference in the game. It's been big plays. That's been the issue. It's been a slugfest in there. But a couple of times it broke open on offense for San Jose State and then on defense for San Jose State with that fumble recovery. Well, I think the other thing is New Mexico hasn't established that they can throw the football at all. They've been able to run it, but they haven't gotten anything through the air so far in this ballgame. Well, New Mexico has had three times as many plays in plus territory in this game as San Jose State. And yet New Mexico finds themselves in a 10-point hold as the turnover at the goal line and two big touchdowns catches one for 76 yards to Broussard one for 36 yards to James Jones providing the scoring for the Spartans now New Mexico won the toss they deferred or rather San Jose State pardon me won the toss to start the game and deferred until the second half so with that 10-point lead the Spartans will begin the second half with the football and Bird puts it deep in the end zone and Jacob French won't even attempt as we check in on the field with Stacy Dale well, Bob, I just spoke to Dick Tomey, coach for San Jose State, and I asked him about the defense. He said, despite some success stopping in the red zone, very unhappy with the inside rush defense. They've got to clean that up and have to establish offensively a rush of their own. And on the other side, Rocky Long made the point. We went back to that old-school Lobo defense a couple weeks ago, and we've had some communication errors and miscues defensively. Guys, they're going to have to clean that up to have a chance in this game, Bob. Well, Stacey, as we said, it has been a busted coverage and a couple of big plays for the Spartans that have given them the 10-point lead. Again, the blitz picked up, but Trafal is hit from the blind side. Stephen Hutchinson beat his man wide and got to Trafalis, helped out by Wesley Beck. Well, that's a little bit of the old-school defense Stacey was talking about. Rocky Long wanted to go back to the pressure and man coverage a lot. You see the pressure coming from the right side. It's Steve, Stephen Hutchinson who manages to get there. But Trevor, Rocky Long decided to use his bow prep time to work on the defense for next season and change what they had been doing. Well, they, they had gotten away from their roots as a blitzing team, and they wanted to get back to it. But it's created some confusion in the secondary. A loss of eight on first down. Trafalis with the pitch. Davis slumped under inside the 10. What a start to the second half for the Lobo defense. Well, they picked up on the rush defense where they left off. San Jose State only had 30 rushing yards in the first half. That part has gone well. But two busted coverage led to both touchdowns, and that's where New Mexico needs to clean it up. Uh, this play was made outside by Glover Quinn. He defeated the block and then got there, stopped the play, and Aleem Harris came in and cleaned it up. Aleem Harris is playing that Lobo position today, gentlemen, as Quincy Black, it seems, is playing more of just a straight outside linebacker position and Aleem Harris with his fourth tackle that one for a loss of about six more yards third down and 22 an empty set for Fallis in the shotgun tucks it under and he'll run and he's pushed out of bounds shy of the sticks again by Aleem Harris. So Trafalis at least may have shifted field position back for San Jose State, giving the punting unit some breathing room. Well, here's why he ran. 
We talk about Rocky Long's blitzes. He looked to his left and saw Quincy Black lined up out there and a defensive back. He thought, the blitz is coming from my left. So when he saw immediately that he didn't have his primary receiver, he bugged out and ran right. Can't say I blame him. Thomas Wilson dropping back to punt already with a solid return average. Waylon Prather right on about his season average. He's 11th in the country so far, and this is a rocket low, though, and returnable. He outkicked his coverage. Some room for Thomas Wilson looking to pick up some blockers. Now going south when he should go north, and he's caught at the 26-yard line. A 53-yard punt, a 7-yard return. And, gentlemen, statistically, from the first half, things changing a bit here to start the second half. Well, you see that San Jose State did not have many opportunities. Only 30 yards rushing. They were able to get big plays passing the ball, and New Mexico ran the ball okay. Well, 99 yards, Rodney Ferguson averaging 5.5 yards a carry got 88 of those. That's working okay. That's what Stacy was talking about when Dick Tomey was saying the interior rush defense for San Jose State needs to improve. Well, the biggest momentum-changing play of the game, certainly, for New Mexico was the fumble at the goal line as Chris Nelson has come on now to start the second half at quarterback. So Donovan Portery starts the second half on the bench. Well, you know, they weren't able to throw the ball in the first half. They, they just didn't get anything going. And Nelson, he's played earlier this year, but he hadn't had much success, which is why Portery became the quarterback. And I think they must be looking for a way to get a spark through the air. Well, Nelson is a senior. He's not as physically gifted as Portery, but he knows the offense in and out. Portery sprained his ankle on November 11th against TCU and missed the last two games of the season. As Nelson was the starting quarterback, a flag flies as Ferguson breaks free. And there'll probably be some extra yardage tacked on to the end of this run as it looks. The inaugural New Mexico Bowl. It was a hard-hitting, scoreless first quarter, but then Adam Trefalos with two touchdown passes, one to John Broussard, one to James Jones in the second quarter, and that's the margin, 13-3 San Jose State over New Mexico. And as we take a look at our game track to this point, it has been certainly the passing of Adam Trefalos in the second quarter that has made the difference. And guys, here's the Broussard catch. Well, it's a big play here. You see that there's a miscommunication in the secondary. Three receivers, two defensive backs, miscommunication. Broussard runs the post pattern inside. Trevor, nobody goes with him. That's right. Either there was supposed to be a deep safety in zone or another man coverage guy that wasn't there. And you have the big fumble on the goal line by Ferguson. The offense was doing well running the ball. That turned it over. They didn't get anything out of it. And then once more, a big play created by one of the receivers, Jones, James Jones, in a one-on-one -on -one situation. And that's the difference in the game. It's been big plays. That's been the issue. It's been a slugfest in there. But a couple of times it broke open on offense for San Jose State and then on defense for San Jose State with that fumble recovery. Well, I think the other thing is New Mexico hasn't established that they can throw the football at all. They've been able to run it, but they haven't gotten anything through the air so far in this ballgame. Well, New Mexico has had three times as many plays in plus territory in this game as San Jose State. And yet New Mexico finds themselves in a 10-point hole as the turnover at the goal line and two big touchdowns down catches one for 76 yards to Broussard one for 36 yards to James Jones providing the scoring for the Spartans now New Mexico won the toss they deferred or rather San Jose State pardon me won the toss to start the game and deferred until the second half so with that 10-point lead the Spartans will begin the second half with the football and Bird puts it deep in the end zone and Jacob French won't even attempt as we check in on the field with Stacy Dale well, Bob, I just spoke to Dick Tomey, coach for San Jose State, and I asked him about the defense. He said despite some success stopping in the red zone, very unhappy with the inside rush defense. They've got to clean that up and have to establish offensively a rush of their own. And on the other side, Rocky Long made the point. We went back to that old school Lobo defense a couple weeks ago, and we've had some communication errors and miscues defensively. Guys, they're going to have to clean that up to have a chance in this game, Bob. Well, Stacy, as we said, it has been a busted coverage and a couple of big plays for the Spartans that have given them the 10-point lead. 
Again, the blitz picked up, but Kerfalis hit from the blind side. Stephen Hutchinson beat his man wide and got to Trafalis, helped out by Wesley Beck. Well, that's a little bit of the old school defense Stacy was talking about. Rocky Long wanted to go back to the pressure and man coverage a lot. You see the pressure coming from the right side. It's Steve, Stephen Hutchinson who manages to get there. But Trevor, Rocky Long decided to use his bowl prep time to work on the defense for next season and change what they had been doing. Well, they, they had gotten away from their roots as a blitzing team, and they wanted to get back to it. But it's created some confusion in the secondary. A loss of eight on first down. Trafalis with the pitch. Davis swamped under inside the 10. What a start to the second half for the Lobo defense. Well, they picked up on the rush defense where they left off. San Jose State only had 30 rushing yards in the first half. That part has gone well. But two busted coverage led to both touchdowns, and that's where New Mexico needs to clean it up. Uh, this play was made outside by Glover Quinn. He defeated the block and then got there, stopped the play, and Aleem Harris came in and cleaned it up. Aleem Harris is playing that Lobo position. Today, gentlemen, is Quincy Black. It seems he's playing more of just a straight outside linebacker position. And Aleem Harris with his fourth tackle. That one for a loss of about six more yards. Third down and 22, an empty set for Fallis in the shotgun. Tucks it under and he'll run. And he's pushed out of bounds, shy of the sticks again by Aleem Harris. So Trafalis at least may have shifted field position back for San Jose State, giving the punting unit some breathing room. Well, here's why he ran. We talk about Rocky Long's blitzes. He looked to his left and saw Quincy Black lined up out there and a defensive back. He thought, the blitz is coming from my left. So when he saw immediately that he didn't have his primary receiver, he bugged out and ran right. Can't say I blame him. Thomas Wilson dropping back to punt already with a solid return average. Waylon Prather right on about his season average. He's 11th in the country so far, and this is a rocket low, though, and returnable. He outkicked his coverage. Some room for Thomas Wilson looking to pick up some blockers. Now going south when he should go north, and he's caught at the 26-yard line. A 53-yard punt, a 7-yard return. And, gentlemen, statistically, from the first half, things changing a bit here to start the second half. Well, you see that San Jose State did not have many opportunities. Only 30 yards rushing. They were able to get big plays passing the ball, and New Mexico ran the ball okay. Well, 99 yards, Rodney Ferguson averaging five and a half yards a carry got 88 of those. That's working okay. That's what Stacy was talking about when Dick Tomey was saying the interior rush defense for San Jose State needs to improve. Well, the biggest momentum-changing play of the game, certainly, for New Mexico was the fumble at the goal line as Chris Nelson has come on now to start the second half at quarterback. So Donovan Portery starts the second half on the bench. Well, you know, they weren't able to throw the ball in the first half. They, they just didn't get anything going. And Nelson, he's played earlier this year, but he hadn't had much success, which is why Portery became the quarterback. And I think they must be looking for a way to get a spark through the air. Well, Nelson is a senior. He's not as physically gifted as Portery, but he knows the offense in and out. Portery sprained his ankle on November 11th against TCU and missed the last two games of the season. As Nelson was the starting quarterback, a flag flies as Ferguson breaks free. And there'll probably be some extra yardage tacked onto the end of this run as it looked as if Ferguson's face mask was caught just as he got through the line. It could have been held. Vince Natale, an outstanding senior, got driven back and i think they might have got called him for holding well this should be offsetting penalties as his face mask was grabbed right there the officials missed the face mask and got the hold number 66 of the offense 10-yard penalty from the previous spot repeat second down that's the tally on freddie mccutcheon who's explosive and disruptive driving off the line of scrimmage and that time he got off on the ball faster than the center, Natali, and that might have been an issue of the new quarterback using a cadence that was too easy to predict. Rocky Long and the Lobo sideline, they are stalking the officials right now. 
as it seemed as if and you could hear the booze in the background as the penalty was announced gentlemen a 28 yard run is wiped away and not to say that the holding call was an incorrect call but it should have been at best offsetting because clearly the face mask of Rodney Ferguson was grabbed and that was missed by everyone in the striped shirts I don't think anybody in the stadium rooting for the Lobos missed it and this wide receiver screen picks up only a couple of yards to Marcus Smith Demetrius Jones came up to make the stop it'll be third down and long third down at about 14 and this is again the fourth different quarterback change that New Mexico has been forced to make this season and Nelson had his chance earlier and didn't provide the spark and that's why Porter went in there but now he's back in because he gives them the best shot shot as a passer and a passing situation here third down and long to the sideline broken up Domingo Holmes jumped the roof and it will be fourth down and the Lobos will be forced to punt but you can see the thinking here of Bob Toledo the running game in the first half performed well enough to win it was the passing game that struggled and they weren't able to sustain drives enough because they couldn't get enough big plays through the air and so he switched quarterbacks to try to get that passing element James Jones back deep to receive the sixth punt for New Mexico today Jordan Scott this season averaging about 41 yards per kick and this one off the side of his foot. It takes a bounce for the Lobos, fielded on a hop and running out of bounds to the near side. Great field position for the Spartans as Jones takes it out across the 45-yard line. 38-yard punt, a 7-yard return. San Jose State has the football and a 10-point lead. You are killing me, Birdwood. Hey. Take the secret shortcut. I've never heard of the secret shortcut. Because it's a secret, Ham. Take it. Not bad, Birdwood. You ever taken this trail, Birdwood? Once. I'm moving now. Now would be a good time to have accident forgiveness. Not too bad. Or new car replacement. Your choice auto insurance. Only from Allstate. Birdwood. Are you in good hands? Do you have the code? Ultimate code of seduction. The Armani code. The Bergens for Men by Giorgio Armani at Dillard's. We can afford SAP software on a mid sized company budget. This better not be another prank by the guys in procurement. <laughs> gift from Jared can cause quite a stir. Hey everyone! He went to Jared. He went to Jared. He went to Jared. He went to Jared. You went to Jared. Not every jewelry store gets this reaction, but nothing else is Jared. Jared's selection is truly extensive, built piece by piece to offer distinctiveness, attractive pricing, and style. I went to Jared. That's Jared, the one and only Galleria of Jewelry. He went to Jared. Over the last 100 years, millions of NCAA student athletes have gone pro in something other than sports. Bowl players welcome dinner at the El Pinto restaurant a couple of nights ago. They had tradition, traditional New Mexico food and a chili contest and cook-off. And this couldn't have made the Lobos happy at all as San Jose State came out victorious in the chili contests and cook-off. There was some karaoke involved and I am doing my best to talk over all of the karaoke. If you had heard it the way we did yesterday, you'd understand why San Jose State with a 10-point lead. So they win the chili cook-off. They have the lead early on in the third quarter. Rafalis again goes downtown. Trying to run under it again was Broussard. And Quincy Black, who grew up in Chicago, he told us that one of the big adjustments he had to make coming to Albuquerque, the food. <laughs> yeah. 
he, he said he was quite surprised to go to a McDonald's and order a double cheeseburger and find out that it came with green chili. Well, yeah, he said, I want a chili, put chili on my burger. Sure, I'll have a chili cheeseburger. And green stuff on top of it yeah, instead he, of what he expected. Yeah, he expected chili, you know, with, with meat and beans. He said it was chili. Here in Albuquerque, it's chili with an E, not chili with an I. As Trafalis may be changing the play at the line. Play clock down to one. And now a false start will be called against Giannis Davis. You know, we asked Black how long it took him to get used to the food here, and he said, I haven't. <laughs> <laughs> so he's got used to a lot of other things, though. He, he He's an amazing young man. He grew up the south game. side of Chicago. Five yards in a penalty. very difficult we'll area. Down. Drugs, all kinds of problems. And his father died when he was a freshman in high school his mother died when he was a senior in high school and he never got involved with the drugs and the things that he saw bring down friends and family members and he was able to get out of there and become an example for other kids well, instead of getting davis for a false start they do call delay of game against san jose state second down at 15. low snap for follows handles it and comes underneath james jones Picks up the penalty yardage at about four more yards. But again, we asked Quincy Black those questions. And here's what he told us about the adjustment coming to Albuquerque. I've never had green chili before I got here. And, and you know, chili is where I'm from is beans, meat. You know, you throw some of those oyster crackers in there. But chili out here is more like salsa. But uh, the first day I went to McDonald's when I first got here and they had uh, green chili double cheeseburger. I didn't know what green chili was. so. Uh, obviously, I didn't go with it. <laughs> it is the kind of stuff where if you see it and you're not sure what it is, you are not going to be that risky. Third down and five. Timeout call by State. So they spend their first time out here in the second half with 9.37 to go in the third quarter. Adam Trafalis making sure. Faced with a big third down and five when we come back. I used to think all Native American art was the same. Then I came to New Mexico and discovered 19 Pueblos, each with a unique style. I used to think all... For a vacation that will take you full circle, discover New Mexico. Tools are what you do. Gifts are what she does. Get where we're going here? Check out the Craftsman Quiet Glide Storage Combo. Drawers open smooth and easy. If you want it, ask for it. Craftsman at Sears. With every kiss, with every step, love grows. Celebrate life's journey together with the Journey Diamond Necklace from K Jewelers. Multiple diamonds arranged from smallest to largest to symbolize how love has grown from K, where every diamond is hand-selected to match beautifully. Every kiss begins with K. Plenty of sunshine through today with seasonal temperatures. We should reach our normal class. <laughs> What a marvelously glorious looking shape. What a superbly spectacular marvel of rotating titanium. I love this shaver. For a close, comfortable shave, get the new Remington Titanium Rotary. This holiday, give and ye shall receive. Visit our website for a limited time offer. Long John Silver's has some exciting news you're going to love. It's a fast food first. Buttered lobster bites are back. Rich, real langostino lobster in a buttery breading. Incredibly just $2.99. Only at Long John Silver's. I thought turquoise was just a shade of blue. Then I saw it. It had shades of passion, mystery, and grace. And I always thought turquoise was... For a vacation that will take you full circle, shop New Mexico. How proud are you? How strong are you? How imposing can you be? The best way to prove yourself is to play in a game like this. USC, Michigan. In the granddaddy of them all, the Rose Bowl game presented by City, New Year's Day. What a game that should be. We have a good one here. The first ever New Mexico Bowl, third and five. 
for San Jose State. They have only five first downs in the game. They are 0 for 5 on third down and yet have a 10-point lead. For Fallis with time. They try and run for it. Gets a block and does not pick up the first down. Stuffed. Herbert Felder came up to make the stop. Well, this is why Trafalis didn't have anybody to throw to. On the left, the defensive end backed out on his own blitz. They lined up in a blitz formation, but only four ended up rushing the passer. The other linebackers and the defensive end on the defensive left back into coverage. Trafalis thought he would see man. He saw zone. They're going to go for it. Quickly up to the line comes San Jose State. And now Trafalis takes a knee. Flags fly. Well, the idea there is to go up and try to get the defense to jump. Get up to the line of scrimmage, start calling a hard count cadence, and the center, if he sees a defender in the neutral zone, will snap the ball. That's why Trafalis yeah, took a knee. Yeah, look at the snap infraction on 68 of the offense. Five yard penalty, Richie Church, four down. Well, that's going to change that right now. Dick Tomey's going to kick that ball away. Here comes the bunting unit. As fourth and one becomes fourth and six. And that was actually a dicey spot to go for it on fourth down to begin with on your own side of the 50-yard line at about the state 47. Well, you can see there the son of J Justin Pacinger double clutches that snap. Rather a wobbly kick. And that one off the side of his foot floats out of bounds. And they will mark it across the 30, out close to the 35-yard line. A reminder that we are following Bobby Knight on the brink of history. And one of those wins now in the books. 879 career wins for Bob Knight. He ties Dean Smith's record. Of course, his next win would break it. And the next two games, both on ESPN2. Thursday, December 28th at 9 p.m. against UNLV. And then again, New Mexico on New Year's Day at noon. We'll check in with Stacey Dales in a moment for her perspective on the general, considering the fact that she is... So the best basketball player on this broadcast crew. I like that time. <laughs> Chris Nelson to the air. Launches one down the sideline, broken up. Nice play by Christopher Owens. Stacy. Well, considering that Trevor doesn't even like basketball, that's a, <laughs> quite a compliment, guys. But I've had the pleasure in my basketball world of covering Bob Knight as a reporter. And whether you like the guy or don't like the guy, you have to respect the guy. Why? He's just honest. He gives you exactly what he believes in his mind. The first time I ever met him, I got the cold handshake. Very first time, I walked up to him. I said, Coach Knight, I'm Stacy Dales. I'm the reporter for this game. He outstretched his hand. I took his hand. He never said a word to me. We developed a rapport afterwards, though. I gained his respect because of my knowledge in basketball. Just a tiny bit of knowledge, uh, kind of like you guys have there in the booth. So he gave you the cold fish for a handshake. <laughs> <laughs> what a great coach, though, guys, and a terrific honor uh, that he will achieve this season. Just a special coach and what he's done for college basketball. Well, the crowd here at New Mexico would throw a chair across the field if they could. They are as angry as could be as a late flag came out just at the end of that play. An offensive pass interference was called against the Lobos. So now it's first down at 25 after a 15-yard penalty and Nelson being chased. Calling for one of his receivers to come back and help. None do, and he throws it away. Well, here's the, here's the pass interference, and they're working over on the far side. And Owens looks like it was number four, Marcus Smith, that was pushing off on him. Yeah, it looked like Smith saw that ball coming in, thought it would be an interception, tried to break up the interception, but got his hands in on Owens before the ball got there and impeded Owens' arms. Actually, better for the Lobos that that happened than an interception. Looked like a questionable call to me. Second down at 25. Again, Nelson to the air. Wants to set the screen up. Ferguson has it. Makes a tough catch. 
and fights his way out to about the 28-yard line. A good 15-yard shy of a first down. Castello made the stop. You know who New Mexico has got to get involved in this game, in the passing game, if they hope to come back, is tight end John Mulcrow, number 83. He is the best pass-catching tight end that they've had here in over 10 years in terms of numbers of catches. And he had zero catches in the first half, and so far hasn't done anything in the second half either. He will be key. They've got to find a way to get him the ball. Well, he's the only option because they can't do anything against these corners. I mean, Dwight Lowry is gobbling up one side of the field out there by himself. Third down, a long 15. Nelson with good protection, now dancing in the pocket. Reverses field to buy some more time. Can't find a receiver open downfield and eventually goes down at about the line of scrimmage. Well, he had Mo Crow. Well, he wanted to work on Lowry. And he looked out there, and Lowry was sitting on top of the receiver when the receiver slipped down, and he had to pull the ball down. And he's watched to the top of the screen. There's Mo Crone you're talking about. He's kind of covered there. Well, but now he breaks open, and on the scramble, he'll come up, and he'll get open. Yeah, but he, he can't make that throw rolling to his left. Now, now watch the left side of the screen. He's looking to work on Lowry, but he has to pull it down because Lowry has jumped the route. He's all over it. And now rolling to his left is a little too, little too hard for him to throw that ball back across his body. The fifth three and out for New Mexico. And an ugly punt from Jordan Scott rolls all the way down to about the 31-yard line, but there's a flag down. This is all the way back at the 25-yard line of San Jose. You wonder if this is too many men on the field against one of the two teams. Well, two flags are on the on the turf right now. Really with participation by the return team, 12 men on the defense, 15-yard penalty, we play fourth down. That's usually what the flag in that area of the field means. That's the official responsible for counting the number of players on the field. So it's 12 men on the field against San Jose State. Uh, that's going to move them pretty close to the first down mark. It'll be about nine or ten yard shot. They'll still have to punt yep. again. Although it will be a much more makeable kick for New Mexico. And I, I would think that New Mexico would opt to try and kick this ball away again. Uh, it's going to move them a lot closer than nine or ten yards. Oh, pardon me. You're right. I mean, they're, they're within, you know, two feet of a first down. Well, if you're New Mexico and you've got that powerful offensive line, and you've got Rodney Ferguson, who has been running well up the middle. At this point, you got to take the shot. They're, 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 they're going to go for it. Yeah, well, you know, they haven't had much offense. They can't throw it right now. They've got to keep the ball. Risky. Very risky. On fourth down, Nelson fumbles the snap and dives forward. It all depends on the spot. Nelson may have picked it up on what turned into a broken play quarterback sneak. Don't think so. Different quarterbacks have their hands under the center at different depths, depending on their height, etc. Now, this time, it looked like the ball hit him square in the hands, so it wasn't an issue of having a different depth. Yeah, he he might have just been anxious to get out there and try and move with the football, and he lost it. It seems to me that ball's got to be marked short. And San Jose State takes over. And if that does happen, you can expect San Jose State to take a shot right away to try and put the ball game away. The spot does not go the Lobos way. San Jose State takes over on downs. Although when Nelson fumbled the snap, he jumped on top of his own offensive lineman. He was not actually down the moment that he came forward. You wonder if he got a bad spot. Let's take another look. No, he's not even close, uh, buddy. He's not even close. Yeah. That, that's a great spot. You're right. Uh, his, Certainly it's where the football is as well, not well, where his head is. His knee was on the offensive lineman, but his helmet was on the <laughs> ground. And a, and, and a head is as good as a knee when it comes to being down. Well, the only hope you would have there if you're Rocky Long is to challenge the spot. Well, after big plays, Rocky Long tends to bring pressure. And if he does, San Jose State will be looking for a big play. Giannis Davis splits out wide after going in motion. 
Broussard for about four yards, brought down immediately by DeAndre Wright. Well, Rod, you, you, you called it. They had set up a big play. They had two receivers to the left side of the offensive formation with man coverage and no safety back there, and yet they elected to throw short instead of long. I thought that was an opportunity. Yeah, and, and you can expect that Rocky Long, Trevor, will continue to dial up the pressure now. And he wants to create something, and he's, in a, he's a very aggressive coach. Up the middle for about four more yards goes J.T. Collier. It'll be third down and two. You know, talking to Rocky Long yesterday, he said that he felt like, you know, he got a little bit conservative as he got older as a coach. Well, conservative meaning you dial up all those blitzes with pure man coverage behind. When you're young and full of fire, you say, hey, let's go out and play them. But now he's a little older and he's a little worried about some of those risks. Yeah, he says, well, let's put a little zone behind that. But he wants to get back to his old style of bringing that pressure and manning up across the field. What's they're doing now? A chance for the Lobos to get off the field. Third down and two. Here comes the pressure. Trafalis wide open over the middle has Broussard. First down inside the 25. Well, that's exactly what they did, Rod. They went to an empty backfield. They had five receivers out, and they brought everybody that they didn't need to cover. Well, here's that that spread you're talking about. Now, look at where they're bringing it from, and they're bringing it here. So you just go sit down and wait for your quarterback to find you. Yeah, a couple guys sitting down right in the middle. That's Broussard, 81, sitting there waiting for the ball. Zafralis gives San Jose State the first first down of the third quarter for either team. Now he wants six. What a catch made by James Jones into the end zone for a touchdown. The second time that Zafralis has hooked up with Jones on the afternoon. A jump ball with DeAndre Wright and the security blanket, James Jones, makes that relationship pay off again. Uh, this matchup hasn't been a great one for New Mexico. Jones has just owned either one of the corners. Wherever he's been, he's been able to be a better out athlete, out-jumping people, and out-running them. So far on the day, Jared Strubeck, one for two. Extra point attempts. This one's right down the middle. A 17-point lead for San Jose State. Third touchdown pass of the day. For Adam Zafralis, second time he's found James Jones. What can you do when you have a rich, unique blend of culture, cuisine, and climate all in one amazing place? trip to Albuquerque, visit itsatrip.org. Get all the college hoops you can handle with the ESPN Full Court Pay-Per-View Package. Presented by Olivia High Definition Television. Up to 30 games per week of top conferences. Critical matchups you won't get in your area. The most complete college basketball pay-per-view package anywhere. Hoops heaven is only a phone call or click away. The ball's in your court. Order now. ESPN Full Court is available on TV and online. To order, call your pay-per-view provider or go to ESPN.com, search Full Court. At Coulter Cadillac, we sincerely hope this holiday season is the best ever. I just wanted to take this time to tell you about a very special sale on Tuesday, December the 26th. For one day only, a special inventory of Cadillacs will be priced thousands below any scene in the Phoenix area. Escalades, DTS, DeVille, CTS, SRX, and all the rest clearly marked and priced to sell today. Remember, Tuesday, December 26th, doors open at 7 a.m. Be first, say big, 12th Street and Camelback. Just look for the car on the roof. Prices are crashing at Freeway Chevrolet. Red Tag is back. I repeat, Red Tag is back. See red, save green. The absolute lowest prices of 2006. Prices will never be this low again. Save thousands and get a five-year, 100,000-mile warranty on every 2007 model. Freeway, Freeway Chevrolet, I-10, and rate. ESPN College Football is broadcast in high definition, presented by Pioneer Plasma. 
Bob Oshusen, Rod Gilmore, Trevor Maddich, Stacey Dales back in the beautiful high desert here in Albuquerque. The first ever New Mexico Bowl. And right now the Lobos in their home stadium have watched James Jones catch two touchdowns against them. Another quick scoring drive. And it's 20 to three San Jose State with the lead with only four and a half minutes to go in the third quarter. It's been big plays for San Jose State. They have 241 yards. 212 of those yards have come on nine plays. All three touchdowns have been big plays. 76 yards, 36 yards, 24 yards. Strubeck's kickoff coming down to DeAndre Wright. He needs to make a big play on special teams. He's had a tough day in coverage. And he's out close to the 30-yard line. Bruised egos on the Lobo sideline, Stacey Dales. Yeah, this New Mexico offense really feeling a sense of urgency and perhaps frustration right now after that last offensive series. Left guard Bo Pierre just emphatically addressed his team. He said, everybody reach down right now and pull yourselves up off the ground. We are three times better than that other team is. And other players chanting, we need a score and we need one right now, guys. Sense of urgency for New Mexico. Well, they're right. They've got to start moving that ball because they haven't been able to throw it at all, uh, Stacy. Can I call you Tracy? <laughs> <laughs> Play action for Nelson. Again has time. Flags flies. He goes to the outside and for the first time finds John Mulcrone. But this looks to be holding. Nelson is thinking too much right now. He's got to trust his reads, make a decision, and get rid of the ball. He had Mulcrone long before he threw the ball to him, but by the time he delivered it, Mulcrone was too close to the sideline to turn it up. Well, part of the problem with the offense is you know, they haven't been able to get the ball to the guys that they want. Travis Brown, as you take a look at Puerto Rico on the sideline there, Travis Brown, they've thrown the ball in his direction ten times, and they've only been able to complete two of them. Marcus Smith has been very quiet today as well. An honorable mention. All Mountain West Conference. He was the leading receiver in yards well, who, and receptions as well. Who's out there for San Jose State? Somebody named Dwight Lowry. Exactly. I believe. Always a soft spot for that corner. Draw as Ferguson looks for room. And finds some. Gets back to the original line of scrimmage, picking up about 10 yards, but it will be second down and 10. You know, Trevor, we talked about Dwight Lowry at the beginning of the telecast about how he is a difference maker. When you have a corner like that that can take a side of the field away, it really constricts what an offense can do. Well, it allows the extra defensive backs to leave coverage support of Lowry and get up into the running game and have coverage support to the other defensive backs. Lowry made the American Football Coaches Association All-American team. The first state player in 35 years to be on one of the five nationally recognized All-American teams. A flag back at the line of scrimmage as for the first time today it seems a big pass play for the Lobos, but this one will most likely be wiped away. We're call holding. Hands on hips for Rocky Long. penalty creates second down and 20 inside the 20 yard line and, and this is when New Mexico typically thinks about going to their screen package throwing the ball in the flat trying to put themselves in a position to to get a few yards back to make it a, a manageable third down they need to get out close to the 40 yard line to pick up the first down and they roll Nelson roll the pocket again he looks downfield again has nowhere to go with the ball and throws an interception picked off it's Dwight Lowry again he's to the 20 gets to the 10 looking for the pylon reaches is he in touchdown His 10th interception of the season. This one goes for a score. There is a flag down. But this is why you stay away from his side of the field. San Jose State's first All-American in 35 years. He's a ball hawk. He's always been a ball hawk. He played as a free safety in junior college. Why? I don't know. He should have been at the corner then. He's a corner at heart. Kenny Margin, the assistant coach at San Jose State, found him, recruited him, and in his first season, that's his 10th pick. 
Well, he, he told us yesterday that before all of his interceptions, he gets a tingly feeling, and he knows what route will be run. He knows where the ball will be thrown. It's uncanny, and it surprises him. But he gets that tingle, and then he gets the pick. Wipe away the pick and wipe away the touchdown. They call pass interference against San Jose State. So this highlight play by Dwight Lowry will go down in the archives as one that comes off the scoreboard and gets erased by a penalty. The Lobos have the football back at the 35-yard line, first and 10. What a turnaround. The crowd almost can't believe it. They're in stunned silence. Better with the stop on a four-yard gain for Ferguson. Pass interference called against San Jose State. Well, it wasn't called on Lowry. Lowry was the guy who was flying in to pick it off. But watch, watch in front. Looks like number 37, Demaja Jones, before the ball comes down, hits the receiver and knocks him out of the way. And that actually was a very good call. New life for the Lobos as they try to get back in the game. Incomplete. A drop by Travis Brown. It'll be third down and eight. Well, time and time again, New Mexico doesn't take advantage of these opportunities that they, that they receive. And it's really in the passing game that they've been struggling. They haven't found anybody reliable that can get open or that they can get the ball to. But there's still plenty of time for the play-action passing game to work. Now, it's third and long, not here. But there's still time to pound the ball and then play-action and try to hit Mulcrone and others over the middle. That was the 11th pass that the Lobos have thrown in Travis Brown's direction. Only two completions for 15 yards on those 11 attempts. Mulcrone has thrown a bit behind him and knocked away as a result. Domingo Holmes took it away from the big tight end. It's fourth down and eight. And as things stand right now, the offense stays on the field. Nope, slowly, here comes the punting unit. Well, Trevor, it's no surprise that San Jose State understands exactly what you just said, throw to Mo Crone. They know that Brown is really out of the action because of what Lowry's doing out there. So San Jose State can overplay the tight end now. And that's what they have been doing. And as long as the play action pass is not utilized, they'll be able to. Well, Lowry is now back deep to receive the punt from Jordan Scott. And he gets away a high wobbly spiral. Fair catch called for by Lowry and made just across the 25 yard line. One minute, 49 seconds remaining in the third quarter. It has been all Spartans. They have a 17 point lead. You guys run the double team a lot, right? Join us in March for ESPN The Weekend at the Walt Disney World Resort. Book your trip online today. I needed to relax, so I took a vacation to New Mexico. Ironically, I learned the best way to blow off steam is to be surrounded by hot air. And just a few days ago, I needed to... For a vacation that will take you full circle, unwind in New Mexico. Aqua de Gio. Giorgio Armani. And Macy's. Just playing in the Super Bowl isn't enough for Matt Hasselbeck. He hungers for more. Like new Campbell's Chunky Barbecue Burger Soup. Feed your NFL-sized hunger. Campbell's Chunky. Deals that fill you up right. Just three medium Pizza Hut pizzas. That's only five bucks each, right? Yes, sir. Thanks. Thank you. Honey! The Pizza Hut kid made a mistake again! I got three medium Pizza Hut pizzas for the same price as those other guys. <laughs> yeah. It's no mistake. Pay just five bucks each for three medium one-topping hand-tossed Pizza Hut pizzas. Want to get three for five? Go for the good stuff. Give a holiday card everyone in the family will love. Pick up the Pizza Hut card today. I'm Dale Hart Jr. Welcome to Wrangler Jeans Company, a new generation of Wrangler. New fits, new comfort, new styles. Wrangler Jeans Company, a new generation of Wrangler. New fits, new comfort, new style. The Philips Morelco Smart Touch XL adjusts to your face for a closer shave with 50% more shaving surface and three shaving rings in each shaving head. Philips Morelco, the world's best-selling electric shaver. Simplicity is making every stroke count. 
I used to think all Native American art was the same. Then I came to New Mexico and discovered 19 pueblos, each with a unique style. I used to think all... For a vacation that will take you full circle, discover New Mexico. Bowl season is not just about football, but it's about making contact with those in your community. And plenty of credit to both teams, San Jose State and New Mexico. They visited Cary Tingley Hospital on Thursday and met with some young patients to bring a little cheer to their holiday season. And the teams got along really well this week, getting ready for today's game at San Jose State. They've taken it out on New Mexico so far, 20 to three. And there have been a lot of meetings for that Lobos offense on their sideline. Not a lot of solutions, though, when they come out on the field. Rafalis again comes underneath. James Jones makes the catch and picks up a routine 11 and a first down. Well, interesting there, Rod. Soft zone. They've gotten away, at least on that play, from the aggressive blitzing man coverage because they've been burned by long plays on that coverage. But, you know, Rocky Long told us yesterday that he views bow preparation as the time to get ready for the next season, that that is a priority. And so he wanted to work on this new defense or the, the old defense he used to run years ago. More man coverage, more pressure, and against these receivers, that may not be the best recipe. First and 10. Rafalis now to the ground. Patrick Perry gets to the outside and picks up about nine yards. And down flat on his face after a heavy hit was DeAndre Wright. Well, most coaches will tell you that one of the biggest benefits of bowl season is the extra practice that you get. Younger players can, can get work on the practice field that they normally wouldn't get because they're running the scout team. At the same time, by going back to this style of defense, the defensive backfield has gotten confused. I think that's right. I think Patrick Perry is also down, or he was down on the sideline for San Jose State. And he still is. Yeah. And, and, and Trevor, back, back to your point, I mean, you're absolutely right. I mean, most coaches want to do that, and Rocky Long is no different in that sense. I mean, he basically said, look, if you're not playing for the BCF championship game, you ought to be preparing for next season. Well, I think that's a matter of semantics, really, because they're all preparing for next season. Guys, what a game it has been for Adam Tefralis. He has been flawless. 11 of 16 for 209 yards. All three touchdowns, though, have been big plays. Well, he's been on the money with the long throws. I mean, here he finds his big man, John Broussard, for that first half touchdown. And then he finds Jones later. And he's done it under pressure. And he's done it outside of the timing of the system most of the time. Now, that was a timed fade route to Jones. But on many of his big plays, the play broke down, and he and Jones worked together to make something out of nothing. Second down and one, and flags stop the play at the line. San Jose State had two guys in moving at the same time. Still working on Patrick Perry, the right leg, and it is a false start against the Spartans. But Adam Terfalis, who we spoke with yesterday, also an entrepreneur. He owns, or at least co-owns, and helps operate a couple of restaurants in the San Jose area. And it was funny, he actually told us that the folks that come to the restaurants that he works at and helps operate have no idea that he plays football. They just think he's the guy at the restaurant. That, that might change next week. <laughs> and now maybe some trickery here as James Jones is lined up as the quarterback and Trafalis is lined up in the slot to the top of your screen. Jones on a keeper. And he picks up maybe three yards out to the 45-yard line. Aleem Harris with his eighth tackle. Well, the restaurant he works at now is called the Chicken Coop. And he loves <laughs> to bring his, his offensive lineman. He, he's got an investment uh, interest in these restaurants. And he's opening up his own coming up in the new year. But the thing is, he can take the offensive lineman to the Chicken Coop. And they can eat all the food <laughs> they want. But NCAA rules will not allow him or the Chicken Coop to give them any kind of discounts. So they're paying retail. And that's one way I guess he can maximize his investment, right? <laughs> so Adam Tafralis, who today is the three-touchdown quarterback guy. Normally, he is the San Jose chicken coop window delivery guy. And he has had a heck of an afternoon, as has State. The Jets take on the Dolphins at 8.30 on ESPN Monday Night Football.
170 channels to turn your holidays on. Get an XM radio and three-month service for under $99. XM, terms and conditions apply. Finally, a vacation in the Alps. Dad, we're not really in the Alps. Well, my credit card miles expired, but a virtual trip is still fun, huh? Where's Bob? Oh, Armando, teach me to dance. Oh. Hey, that is my wife! You should switch to Capital One. Get Capital One's no hassle rewards with no miles expiration, no earn caps, and no blackout dates. Oh, I'm wrapped in the Amazon! What's in your wallet? Right now at Fred Meyer and Littman Jewelers, our entire collection of diamond rings is on sale. Like this stunning two carat total weight diamond ring for just $9.99. For all those special times. Fred Meyer and Littman Jewelers. Hi, this is Ron for Riviera Pools. Highest quality, lowest possible price, the shortest build time, and easy financing. Riviera Pools will beat any advertised price, and I include the Polaris pop-up cleaning system in every pool I build. Don't buy a pool without getting Polaris pop-ups. Visit any of our five valley locations. Riviera Pools, your hometown pool builder. Visit Riviera Pools or call 602-454-POOL for the office near you. Hear that? It's the sound of unlimited freedom from Cricket. Talk and text all you want, including unlimited mobile web. Be unlimited in every Cricket market for just $50 a month without ever signing a contract. That's the sound of freedom from Cricket. And right now, buy any phone and get your first month free with no activation fee. Check out our holiday offers at a Cricket store near you in North Phoenix. During our commercial timeout, I was sure that Red Grange was at the game, but it turns out that it's Bumpy, and it's good to see that Bumpy has turned out today as the San Jose State Spartans are having a heck of an afternoon. And as we take a look at today's storyline, presented by K Jewelers, and certainly Adam Tafralis is right in the middle of that storyline. Three touchdown passes, 265 total yards for San Jose State, 221 coming on nine plays, four three and outs and seven punts for New Mexico. And those numbers certainly telling the story. Third down and three. New Mexico desperately needs a stop. And they get it. That time, the one time that Wright won the battle with Jones. Well, it's been tough on Wright. Wright's been there on Jones. But Jones has won the battle of the ball in the air. This time, Wright comes up and steps in front of Jones. He correctly reads the route, and he becomes the receiver. But boy, a pick there instead of just a pass breakup would have been what New Mexico really wanted. Prather again set to punt. Thomas Wilson is back deep to receive at his own 10-yard line, respecting the leg of Prather. And wisely so, a wobbly kick, but it travels to the 15. Wilson catches it on the run. And a 12-yard return out to the 27-yard line. Again, we are not done in terms of football today on ESPN. The bowl road trip continues. The Bell Helicopter Armed Forces Bowl. The Golden Hurricane of Tulsa taking on the Utah Utes. Again, that comes up a little bit later on tonight at 8 p.m. Eastern time. And Paul Smith, we will get a good look at him. Tulsa against Utah coming up next on ESPN, gentlemen. You really like him, huh? I, I love Paul Smith. I love the way he uses every iota of his own talent to get the ball into the hands of other talented players. And because of that, the hole is more than the sum of the parts. Still a lot of time left for New Mexico, but they need big plays out of Nelson. And this time he guns one over to Marcus Smith, and that's good for 12 yards and a first down. But Keen Toons on the tackle. Great job by Marcus Smith coming back to the ball. There were two defenders out there. Had he not come back to the ball, it would have been picked off. There right. He came back to the ball, then he kept coming back and kept coming back and kept coming back right <laughs> at the quarterback until the ball was delivered. Donovan Portery on the sideline, pulled after an ineffective first half. Chris Nelson has been equally ineffective, though, here in the second half. And Nelson under pressure. Steps up, throws right, and finds his man. Again, it's Marcus Smith. Those are the two best pass-looking look pass plays we've seen out of New Mexico today. It's another first down. Marcus Smith, the fastest player on this team, wise to get the ball into his hands in high school in San Diego in a track meet. 
he was head to head in the 100 meters against Reggie Bush, and he beat him. No, he didn't. Yeah, he did. No. And uh, Reggie Bush might have something to say about that. I, but I, I'm not buying that one. That's 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 on record. And Legend. so Smith is the guy <laughs> you want to get the ball to in the open field here if you want a big yards after the catch. He beat Reggie Bush. That's what he said in the 100 meters. Ferguson caught behind the line and dropped Justin Cole, who was injured in the first half, but has now come back in the second half, and he drops Ferguson for a three-yard loss. I don't think Marcus Smith is faster than Reggie Bush, but on that day, <laughs> he was faster than Reggie Bush. Well, his nickname is Bullet. <laughs> and a 17-point deficit for New Mexico, and now they're faced with second down at 13. Well, there's only one play so far in San Jose State territory in the second half of the Lobo. This will be the second. Nelson gets some pass protection, checks down to Ferguson, and he's brought down about three yards shy of a first down. That's a little bit more of what New Mexico needs. They really can't get the ball down the field. They're going to have to get it out into the flat to the backs and tight ends. Well, this time Smith causes his defender, I believe it's Owens, to fall down. And Nelson didn't see it. He didn't fall all the way down, Owens did, but Smith was open there, and if the ball would have been delivered, they could have had a much bigger play. It's terrible what receivers do to defensive back. I know, cheating all the time, right, Rod? <laughs> <laughs> Third down and three, a must conversion. And a first down for Ferguson, as he does just squeeze his way inside the 34-yard line. And at this point, you have to figure that's two-down territory, or four-down territory, I should say, for New Mexico regardless, but they pick it up on third down. Well, all they need now, they need two touchdowns and a field goal. And they've got plenty of time to do it. And so they can stick with the running game and the play action passes as long as they get down and get scores. And now they're close to field goal range. The New Mexico team that started off the season two and four, into the season four and two. In the early part of the season, that included a one double-A loss, and now Nelson looking for the end zone. Walks it all in one play. A jump ball knocked away. Great coverage. Christopher Owens all over Marcus Smith. But Christopher Owens was in such great shape that you could argue that the receiver here interfered with Owens. Now watch Owens. He's in great shape. He fades for the ball. He has him on his hip, and you've got the receiver bumping into him. That should have been flat. That's great, great coverage. Great coverage. He slowed down and kept his body between Marcus Smith and the ball. According to Tom Williams, Christopher Owens playing about as good a football as anyone for San Jose State at the end of the season. And now coming up to stuff the hole, Demacia Jones. It'll be third down and 11. Looks like Ferguson lost a yard, maybe two. Well, we've talked about the size difference, but this man here has good quickness and good speed. Now watch Jones as he reads this and flies right in past anyone who could possibly block him. He's got Ferguson in pass coverage, and he's staring at Ferguson the entire time, sees the draw set up, and just runs through and tackles him. Third down and 12 now for Chris Nelson. He's 5 of 10 for 52 yards here in the second half. After Donovan Portery was benched, going 7 of 17 for 61 yards. A swing pass to Ferguson. Fumbles the football. It's loose. And San Jose State has it. The second time that Rodney Ferguson has had a huge fumble in this afternoon's game. We saw the effort on Ferguson's part. He's diving to get as many yards as possible to get that extra few feet for Bird to kick a field goal. And instead of securing the ball, he's going for those extra few feet. And that, that's an effort mistake, just like the first one was an effort mistake. Now take a look at Ferguson here at the end of this play. He'll end up in the air, taking the hit to try to gain the extra yardage, but doesn't secure the ball. Well, he's got to protect the football. Watch Costello come over, helmet and shoulder on ball. That ball was not protected. He had a chance to do it, inside exposed, and he didn't do it. And how about Costello? He's had a quarterback pressure. He's forced two fumbles, 14 tackles. Bringing him to 161 tackles on the season. He came into today, fifth in the nation averaging about 12.3 tackles per game. 
Well, there's still 11 minutes to go in the fourth quarter of this one. He has 14. And a handoff off the right side to J.T. Collier for a short game. Well, Costello had a 20-tackle game earlier this season. He's had two of them this year. Guy, guy gets around the football. Well, there, Rod, there's only been eight performances by an individual defensive player this year where they have had 20 tackles in a game. He has two of the eight. And he may well be on his way to his third 20-tackle game this season. He's certainly on pace for it now. Second down and nine. To Fralis in the shotgun. An empty set, five receivers. The blitz comes off the corner, and he throws the jump ball up again for Jones. And this time, it is knocked away. Ian Clark was back in coverage. Well, the blitz was seen right at the start. They held them at the line of scrimmage. To Fralis set at the line of scrimmage for a while, and he knew right away where he was going because he could see the blitz right in front of him and knew he had man coverage out up top with Jones. He cared not at all that Jones was covered tightly by Ian Clark. There was not an inch of space to put that ball in. He trusted Jones to go up and make the catch anyway, and he almost did. San Jose State, only one of eight on third down, but they've had so many big plays in the game, they haven't needed third down conversions. Five-man rush, Defralis pulls it under, and he will come up short. So it will be three downs and out for the Spartans, but precious time ticking off the clock for New Mexico. So Rocky Long's team is about to get the football back. But Trevor, as you mentioned, they need 17 points and they need a couple of touchdowns and a field goal. But with nine minutes and 45 seconds to go, that last turnover may have cost them enough time to even get those three possessions. Well, that was a potential field goal. They fumbled the ball going into the end zone, so they got no points where it should have been a touchdown. That's 10 points that potentially that they've left on the table because of mistakes. Waylon Prather again on to punt. And he sends a rocket over the head of Wilson, and it bounces into the end zone. So it will come out to the 20-yard line when we return. A 64-yard punt. They are playing the New Mexico Bowl for the New Mexico Bowl trophy. It is a beautiful piece of pottery made by the Native Americans in the area. Do you know what this light switch does? Which one? The, the one on the right. I never use that one. All right, will you look? Yep. On? Off. On? No. Well, are you looking? Yes. Huh. Off. On? Off. On? Off. On? Off. On? Off. Life comes at you fast. When it does, nobody covers your car like Nationwide. Investments, retirement, insurance. Nationwide is on your side. magical time of the year. Experience advanced performance and technology at Acura's Drive Home for the Holidays sales opportunity. Take advantage of special financing on select Acura models for well-qualified customers. You guys run the double team a lot, right? Join us in March for ESPN The Weekend at the Walt Disney World Resort. Book your trip online today. San Jose State has had some pretty well-known gentlemen, a couple of Super Bowl coaches that call San Jose State their home. Bill Walsh and Dick Vermeil, both alums of the Spartans, both went on to hold the Vince Lombardi Trophy as head coaches 
in the National Football League. Obviously, though, for Bill Walsh, his fondest memories ever in football, coaching a certain defensive back to my left. <laughs> Clearly. If he could boil his whole career down, and the ball batted down at the line, and as Chris Nelson couldn't escape, if he could, Bill Walsh boils his whole career down. Clearly, it's the years he spent with Rod Gilbert. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah no yeah, question. Yeah. Well, I know this. I, I, know that, I know that Bill and Dick Vermeil are certainly big San Jose State fans and proud of what's happened there. And probably nobody is more proud of uh, what's happened than, than John Ralston, the, the great former coach of uh, the Denver Broncos and Stanford and athletic director at San Jose State at one point in time. He's really the guy that's been responsible for turning things around at San Jose State. Nelson to the outside has a first down. Travis Brown, a gain of 12. John Rawlson was the guy that helped Dick Tomey and others come to San Jose State. He's look at Dick, uh, Dwight Lowry's on the ground there. That'd be a tremendous loss. The young man is also thinking about the NFL draft. He submitted his papers to the NFL to find out where he stands, but as of right now, is certainly expecting to return to San Jose State next season. And again, there's Dick Tomey out to take care of one of his players on the field. Anytime a player goes down for the Spartans, Tomey is across the field with the training staff as we take another look and see if we can pick up what oh. happened to Dwight Lowry and a kick up in, I guess, an unfortunate area would be the best way to put that. <laughs> Please don't replay that. Yeah. <laughs> And the truck, obviously paying very close attention to Trevor Maddich, just couldn't wait to get a second angle <laughs> Bob, queued up. I, I had to avert my eyes and, and look at you during that, which was probably the better choice. Well, that's the lesser of two evils would be about the best we could say. And Dwight Lowry, as best he can, shakes that off. But Lowry, as you said, as we asked him yesterday if he had made any type of a decision regarding what he wants to do next year. And... He said he hasn't really even thought about it, which obviously I find hard to believe. I'm sure he has at least spent a little time thinking about it, but this is his first year at San Jose State. He's only a junior and a junior college transfer, so he has another year coming and has been one of the surprise cornerbacks in the nation this season. Nelson again all kinds of time, but nowhere to go with the football. Dumps it off, and a great open field tackle is made by Castello again as he dumps Ferguson after about a five-yard game. All right, you're a cornerback. Watching Lowry play, will he benefit by coming back for a senior season? Well, yeah, I think he would. He hasn't played the corner that long in his career. Remember, he spent two seasons in junior college uh, playing free safety, but he's been tutored by one of the best the last year or so, Eric Davis, former Pro Bowl cornerback with the 49ers, that has been working with him. And he's, he's pretty good, as you can tell by watching him out there. Second down and four, play action. Nelson rolls under pressure, has to unload it, throws it away. Well, Lowry went to Cabrillo Junior College, and he was actually found while San Jose State was there recruiting another player. Just had a fantastic game when some of their recruiters and scouts were there. That they was, said, Let, let's yeah. take a look at him. Well, that was Ken Margin, the wide receivers and running back coach at San Jose State. He was a guy that was down there doing the recruiting and found him and knew that there was a place for him and actually utah state was one of the places that had offered lowry a scholarship and then then they pulled it <laughs> go figure third down and four you have to figure four down territory for the lobo they just do pick up the first down as travis brown makes the reception and that is the definition of a gang tackle and now they're saying that it's a fumble and that San Jose State has the ball again. The ball does belong to the Spartans. Christopher Owens emerged from the pile with the loose ball. And Owens has been the beneficiary of all the attention that Lowry's been getting. Lowry had seven interceptions in the first four games. So teams started throwing away from him towards Owens. Owens has had four picks in the last four games of the regular season. So the ball comes his way. He's always around it, and he's been making plays like this. That ball was clearly out. It fell out to the left side of your screen, and Christopher Owens dived right on it. I think that was Jason Evans who stripped the ball. 
And Evans now has a fumbled recovery to go along with that forced fumble. He's been involved on two turnovers. And Giannis Davis to the ground for a gain of five. Now, Bob, we were talking about John Ralston earlier and what, what he meant to San Jose State and what he did. When the leadership started to change, they were looking for an athletic director. They got Tom Bowen over there. And Tom Bowen helped hire Dick Tomey. And Ralston and Bill Walsh were intimately involved in that. They knew the kind of coach that San Jose State needed. And they felt that Dick Tomey was the right guy. And obviously, they were correct. You start with optimism. You start with how positive he is. He gets up every morning excited, no matter how bad the circumstances are, and that has fed this team in their turnaround. Second down and five. A pitch out. Davis tries to turn the corner. Strung out by Vetter and brought down as we check in with Stacy. Well, Trev, you just said it starts with optimism, but it also starts at 6 o'clock in the morning. It's unbelievable, really. These guys get up every morning, some of them about 5 a.m., just to go to practice for two and a half hours. And we asked Dick Tomey why he does that. He picked it up from John Chaney, one of the great legends in the basketball world, and he started at Arizona. Well, one, my guys get to bed early, so they're not causing trouble after 10 o'clock. And number two, it's discipline. They have to get up early, and they go back in the afternoon and actually sit down and watch film from the practice they had that morning. Very good strategy has worked for Dick Tomey, guys. Third down and two. There are worse guys to try and emulate than John Cheney. Look, don't, don't underestimate the importance of getting those guys home in bed by 10 o'clock or so, and not everybody can do it. Not everybody wanted to get up at 6 o'clock, 5 o'clock in the morning, and some people are going to drop by the wayside, he said, because, you know, we're not going to lower our standards so we can include everybody. And as Stacy mentioned in the first half, there were some 30-plus players who left the program because they didn't buy into what Dick Tomei was teaching. Cameron Island now in the game at tailback on fourth down and about two. Pitch out, and Island will try and turn the corner. Being chased by Black. And finally run out of bounds, short of the first down by O.J. Swift. So with five minutes and ten seconds to go in the fourth quarter, New Mexico with a moral victory on defense. As they get the football back, trailing by 17. Golf in New Mexico? Turns out there's everything from mountain to links courses. They don't just have golf. They have some of the most scenic and affordable golf in the country, which is amazing because... For a vacation that will take you full circle, Golf New Mexico. magical time of the year. Experience advanced performance and technology at Acura's Drive Home for the Holidays sales opportunity. Take advantage of special financing on select Acura models for well-qualified customers. You were fooled when I scored from anywhere because you believed that was about me. While I believe it takes five. But you're not a fool, are you? At our recent offsite, I picked up this juicy tidbit. SAP has software for mid-sized businesses. Trust me, it's juicy. Giving a gift from Jared can cause quite a stir. Hey, everyone. He went to Jared. He went to Jared. He went to Jared. He went to Jared. You went to Jared. Not every jewelry store gets this reaction, but nothing else is Jared. Jared's selection is truly extensive, built piece by piece to offer distinctiveness, attractive pricing, and style. I went to Jared. That's Jared, the one and only Galleria of Jewelry. He went to Jared. I thought turquoise was just a shade of blue. Then I saw it. It had shades of passion, mystery, and grace. And I always thought turquoise was... For a vacation that will take you full circle, shop New Mexico. ESPN College Football, the New Mexico Bowl, is brought to you by the New Mexico Tourism Department, who invites you to the land of enchantment, where adventurers follow their hearts and inspired moments are inevitable. 
Acura, Acura, Advance, and ESPN Game Plan. Buy your bowl game package on ESPN.com's Game Plan Online and catch over 20 bowl games live and on demand. San Jose State pitching the shutout so far in the second half. They have held five opponents scoreless this year in the second half. And collectively this year. Happy birthday, man. I'll be there all the Hey, Sam. Hey, Sam. Some holiday wishes from the guys on the sideline. Evans escapes the rush over the middle to Ferguson. And guys, collectively this year, San Jose State has outscored their opponents 173 to 96 in the second half. And one of their biggest wins of the year, of course, Trevor, if I remember right, they were 20 points down to Stanford in the second week of the year. And the student section rushed the field. That, I think Rod Gilmore yeah. was at home cheering and pumping his fist for Dick Tobin. <laughs> that game turned around the season for San Jose State. Nelson again comes underneath the first down. And getting loose for a moment was Travis Brown. He picks up about 10. That game was so important because San Jose State had just lost a close game to Washington, and they came in to the Stanford game, and Stanford put a bunch of points on them, yet... San Jose State came back in the second half and got physical and ran the football down Stanford's throat and got a big win. And that started their season. Well, Dick Tomey told us that for the Stanford game and the Fresno game, in both of those games, the crowd rushed the field. And some of the players had tears in their eyes. He said the idea, Trevor, of three or four years ago, even that most recent past, the crowd rushing the field at San Jose State and tearing the goalposts down was such a ridiculous concept, but it just goes to show you how quickly the program has turned around. Well, it's worse than that. Adam Trafalos told us that in years past, players would turn their their San Jose State football sweatsuits inside out when they walked around campus. They didn't have to deal with the students telling them how bad they were. That's bad. That's real bad. Nelson up the scene, incomplete. I didn't think they used to have enough crowds to rush the field the last two years. Yeah, two years ago, they couldn't average more than 7,500 fans a game, and they were in, in serious jeopardy of losing their Division 1A status until they got this thing turned around the last couple years. Well, you can see how, how they did it. He came in with optimism. He came in showing the players that he cared about them, and he said if the players know that you know them individually and you care about them, you can work them hard. First down up the middle. Or you mean Bauman. Although Dick Tomey has said that really the heart of his defense, he's leaned on his linebackers. And Demetrius Jones is a player that probably has been unsung to a certain extent this year, playing next to Matt Castello. But he's just, he's a great story. We met with him yesterday. He's a self-taught piano player. He does not read music. He has no idea how to pick up a songbook and actually play off of notes on a page, he hears a piece of music and figures it out from there. As Nelson throws inside the 20, and now inside the 10 to about the six yard line, fumbling the football is Travis Brown. Lost at the one, and Lowry has it for San Jose State. Another turnover for the Lobos. Well, that's been the story of the game. The big plays have all been in favor of San Jose State. And you can say that the ball bounces your way a few times, and you got lucky if it just happens a few times. But it's been the entire game, and it's no longer can be attributed to luck. Well, take a look at the hitting, and then the end of this play. Guess who's around the ball? He always seems to be around the ball. Dwight Lowry. Second fumble recovery for Lowry. Lowry, pardon me, and that was the 33rd play, guys, in plus territory tonight for New Mexico, and they have three points to show for it. That's a lot of plays to run in your opponent's end to come away empty time after time. But see, part of the reason they make so many big plays, especially in the second half, is that they are fit. This is part of the turnaround of Dick Tomey. Part of the reason he got them up so early to practice, he worked them out so hard in the off seasons, was because he said he wanted to draw a line in the sand and see who would cross it, who would buy into his theories. And by showing them that he cared, they knew they could sell out for him because if it got to be too much, they could talk 
to the coaches. And there was a good back and forth that brought them a tremendous camaraderie. And Dick told me to us yesterday, there, there are things that you, you discuss with your team and your players and you solicit their opinion on. There are some things that you don't. And what you don't are the things that you believe you need to do to turn around the program. Well, a last-ditch attempt coming from the New Mexico sideline as Rocky Long has issued a coach's challenge trying to determine whether or not Travis Brown was down by contact before fumbling the football. Although the first replay that we got, an end zone look, certainly looked as if the ball squirted out before his knee hit the ground. That one tougher to tell, although the ball is rolling a few yards away from him. Well, that angle was not a, a good enough one. angle to tell. This is the one you look at. Well, it looks like that ball does seem to come out before he's down. Yeah, the question oh, is the knee. the knee. Yeah, you really couldn't see the knee from that angle. And again, the question becomes, do you have definitive video evidence to overturn the ruling on the field? You know, based on those two angles, if that's all they're looking at, that's not enough to be able to say that you ought to overturn that because you couldn't see the knee to see if he's exactly down or not. Just look for that right knee. What do you think, Trevor? Uh, that's the, too hard for me to tell. I can't see a knee down. You know, that's very difficult from that angle. But how about Rocky Long having the coach's cha challenge? Here they are down 17, three minutes to go, and yet he still is fighting out there. And, you know, when you talk about his changing the defense from a more, from a less aggressive stance to, <laughs> to the old-style, more aggressive stance. Yeah, he, he's watching the scoreboard. Looking at the replay, trying to figure out if he's got it or not, he just started laughing as he looked up there, kind of figuring, oh, well, I took a shot. We've had some problems with our referees, Mike, this afternoon, as you could tell, but... Yeah, they, they didn't have evidence to overturn it. When we talk about Rocky changing the defense into the old-style, more aggressive during bowl preparation, and is that just for next year? Well... There he throws the coach's challenge to try to win this game today. He's been playing in the second half. Senior quarterback Chris Nelson instead of freshman quarterback Don Donovan Portery because he's trying to win today. So he is showing a lot of fire and a lot of fight and a lot of importance to this game, even though they seem to be out of it. I, I think you're right. I, I, don't, I don't think anyone would question that. They, they certainly have tried. They're just out. They're out man right now. They could not move the ball through the air on the offense, and eventually that catches up with you. Yeah, and then when they did move the ball on the ground, they would fumble the ball. Yep. Which is really the story of this game is, is not just the big plays on offense by San Jose State, but the fumbles by the offense of New Mexico. And they have fumbled the ball away on their last three possessions in a row. So just short-circuiting any chance they would have to come from behind with two and a half minutes to play. And there have been plenty of miscues today for the Lobos. Yeah, it started early. They had a chance to make a play at midfield on the end of round, and they fumbled the ball. Then the big one was right before the first half when Ferguson gave up the ball. That's right, and Jones gets it and runs it back to midfield. And then here, Rodney Ferguson again trying to make a play, but doesn't secure the ball. And then at the end, another fumble that takes away another scoring opportunity. A full back dive with under two minutes to go as Tefralis took the play clock all the way down to about three seconds before snapping the ball. But it's been a big play day all around for San Jose State. You're looking at some of their defensive players. They have forced turnovers in key moments today. And, and their offense, all the touchdowns have been big plays. Well, you know, they four turnovers, and that's not even counting Lowry's interception that was taken back. That's right. The big hitting. Big hitting by San Jose. Who would have thought San Jose State is going to come out and, and ply and power all those hits on New Mexico? This is a team that a lot of people didn't realize were still playing football. And here they are about to win a bowl game. <laughs> a lot of people, you mean you. <laughs> <laughs> no, I knew they were playing. I was kidding. Uh, I knew they were playing football. It's been a great day for Adam Tefralis, but his number one target has been James Jones. Certainly the hero on defense, Matt Castello. But Jones with a couple of touchdown catches, and he is our player of the game. Six receptions for 106 yards and two touchdowns. And again, he is that security blanket that we talked about, guys, with Tefralis yesterday. 
when I asked him, are, are, are there just guys that you, is there always one guy that when you're in trouble, you almost reflexively look towards? And he said with a smile, have you ever seen James Jones play? And so that was all the answer we needed. And he and Jones have been the combination. And that might be a very, very chilly shower that Dick Tomey's about to get. Well, he ought to know it's coming. He's been around for a while. He's had a few of these water, ice water or Gatorade baths, so he, he should know it's coming. Oh, there's a lot of ice. It's not that cooler. <laughs> I'm surprised it hasn't frozen on the top of it. This, <laughs> this, this is the chance for the players to get even for having to get up at 5 o'clock in the morning all season long. I like that gray sweatshirt with the hood. That's like Bill Belichick. No nonsense, blue collar, no flash, go to work. Yeah, that hood is going to be just perfect to catch some water and ice as well when it finally becomes the bat that he's about to get. And all the smart coaches, they all get away from him. <laughs> One minute, 14 seconds to go. San Jose State will punt out of the end zone. And now just killing some time as flags fly. And Prather steps out of the back of the end zone and takes a safety. We'll have to check the penalty. With 1.08 to play. Well, the reason for that strategically is just to burn off as much time as possible. Well, they're having trouble locating Tommy because he keeps walking out on the field. <laughs> I mean, he's like on the 22-yard line, and these guys are back at around, what, the 30 yards? <laughs> they can't get him. Yeah, he's a good four yards <laughs> into the playing field. Oh, here they go. Here they go. <laughs> they got the wrong one. Dick Tommy doesn't even get the pass. <laughs> there he is. The head coach is dry <laughs> as a bone. <laughs> I wonder if he was in disguise. The coach that got the bath, is he normally the is he normally wearing a ski cap and a sweatshirt? Oh, that is so funny. Hey, the first time I came to talk to you about the fans. You guys the I think that was Steve Morton that they got. The offensive coordinator. They got him. When Steve Morton as if it wasn't chilly enough to just be out there in a golf shirt. Now he's soaking wet. I guess they figured, you know, we're gonna. We're yeah. going to get off of national television with no bath at all. We better just pick one. <laughs> we have a minute and eight seconds to get someone. And look, Dick Tomey has no idea what's going on. He's five feet away, dry <laughs> as a bone, and Steve Morton, the offensive coordinator, instead takes a shower. You, you know what, though? He doesn't know that that happened behind him. There's still time to get <laughs> another tub of ice water and hit him. Well, Trevor, you know that when you do that, you always have to have a guy that gets the hug on the coach to hold him in place so that you can dump the bucket on him. So now Jared Strubeck with the kick from the 20-yard line after San Jose State takes the safety and kills some time. And it's a squib. It bounces through traffic and is fumbled once again. Marcus Smith comes up with it and is taken down at about the 42. Dick Tomey, dry and a moment away from a winner. It's the most magical time of the year. Experience advanced performance and technology at Acura's Drive Home for the Holidays sales opportunity. Take advantage of special financing on select Acura models for well-qualified customers. Get all the college hoops you can handle with the ESPN Full Court Pay-Per-View Package. Presented by Olivia High Definition Television. Up to 30 games per week of top conferences. Critical matchups you won't get in your area. The most complete college basketball pay-per-view package anywhere. Hoops heaven is only a phone call or click away. The ball's in your court. Order now. ESPN Full Court is available on TV and online. To order, call your pay-per-view provider or go to ESPN.com, search Full Court. All right, put the fridge in the vault there. Sir, what are you doing? Uh, well, well, sir, oh, <laughs> uh, since uh, Arizona Federal has made my life so easy, I've decided to move in. Well, we do love comforting you with great checking, online banking, and home loans. I love it, too. <laughs> well, uh, you can love it here. Uh, you just can't live here. I can't? Could you still take my mother-in-law? 
hear that? It's the sound of unlimited freedom from Cricket.